Hello, everyone, dear friends. We are happy to start the second day of the friendly match between Latvia and Sweden. Back with you today, uh, Nikita and Tom. Hello, everyone. Hello, Tom. Hi. How are you feeling today? Oh, I feel uh, great. But it was uh, it was a lot of chess yesterday, and it was actually very uh, interesting. So if we get a day as interesting as yesterday, it will be fantastic. Yeah, true, absolutely. Uh, and I guess we have only about one minute before before uh, the fifth round starts. So, um, what you are expecting today? Um, well. Uh, I think it will be a little bit like yesterday. I don't know if the Swedish team will sort of try to change something. I think they played quite well, but in the end, of course, the Latvians took much more points and, and uh, uh, arguably they, they uh, played uh, better in the end, but there was very many close games, so it could e easily swing back. So I don't know. I'm hoping it will be a, a good fight. Yeah, true. I, I agree with you absolutely. And uh, yeah, probably we have to remind that um, uh, the score of the match right now, Latvians uh, are doing a little bit better. So the score is 10 points for Latvia and six for, um, for the Swedish uh, team. But we have only half a distance. And yeah. the first game... Uh, we see today is between Metalis Vingris and Alva Link Tran. Uh, Alva actually was one of the one of the best players in the Swedish team, at least. Yeah, yesterday. I think she was the best. I think she took two and a half points from uh, four, so that was good. Oh, and I'm a little bit surprised uh, seeing uh, Metalis playing Queen C two in uh, Semislav. Is he G4? Wow, this is the Latvian style. This is something what I am playing. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> really, really cool. Ooh, the, 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 this uh, this is the type of thing that Shirov used to play. You know, yeah. I don't know if, if but he 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 was very uh, he, he liked to play these G4 gambits. Uh, this is so called the uh, Shirov Shabalov attack. So a yeah. lot. Of, uh, it is really nice that um, youngsters are following uh, uh, following the great masters of, of the past. And um, uh, yeah, cool. So uh, it looks like uh, preparation process in our team is on a very decent level. Yeah, this is, uh, this is interesting. Uh, what, what is your opinion about this uh, G4 move and this idea? Do you like it? Do you think it's a good move still? Yeah. Uh, I am I started to play it a um, couple of years ago. And um, <clears throat> this is part of my, um, of my repertoire with white against the semi-slav defense. So mm -hmm. I'm considering um, if black is playing precisely and they know how to react and what to do and they know general ideas, then it should be fine. But um, um, it should be fine for black. Uh, but here's a lot of uh, a lot of fight. And um, although I think bishop d3 is not is not something um, it's a main move in this position. I think there were um, h3, either rook g1 uh, or, or bishop d2, I guess. So. Yeah, bishop d3 uh, is, uh, I mean, it's probably not bad, but it, it could be a loss of tempo. Uh, yeah, the point is usually you want to activate your bishop uh, without losing any tempo. So you just wait as long as you can. And uh, the moment when black takes, then you just deliver... Um, bring your bishop to c4 without losing any time. So this and bishop also, uh, yeah, there. Uh, <laughs> Mitalis needs a masterpiece in this opening because bishop usually belongs to e2 because uh, from e2 he can protect the f3, uh, knight on f3, which is very critical in this line. Well, maybe he has his own ideas. These guys yeah, are very good. <laughs> 
Yeah, I already have uh, some old analysis uh, uh, in 2018, 2019. So maybe something has changed in, yeah. in theory. No, but th this, I mean, it doesn't look bad for white. Uh, black needs to play very actively, but uh, of course, black has not castled yet. So the attack is, is not so dangerous as long as black has not castled, right? Yeah, exactly. So bishop b7 and maybe rook c8, Although, c5. Yeah, exactly. And uh, even sometimes black playing uh, bishop b7 followed by b4. Yeah. Uh, just kicking the knight away from its active position, controlling some central squares, and then they're playing c5 immediately. And yeah. uh, the moment when I take, then black plays rook c8, having this uh, x-ray on the c file uh, due to queen on c2. So, um, but yeah, maybe c5 immediately also uh, is very playable. I guess the very sharp position uh, guaranteed for us. And... Uh, well, that's... But as you said, the bishop on d3 now, we can see Whoa. that right. Oh. Whoa, just look at this. This is going to be something. Ooh. <laughs> and Mitzelis is playing super fast. He's like, I know that all of this. That was preparation. I have my... I'm, in, I'm still in the book. <laughs> um, yeah, I have my files. Uh, my analysis finishes... Uh, in the rook ending three against uh, two, and uh, still there, I have some chances. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible with all this preparation. But um, I think an opening like this, you, you just have to go with the flow, and, and the, it's it's a lot about energy True. and having ideas. I would say, uh, yeah, because there are so many variations, it's very difficult to remember everything, right? Yeah, of course. And for instance, now maybe a white even can take with a knight and then play bishop g6, yeah, yeah, uh, creating some some mating threats against the black's king. So like this, this, attacking the pawn, attacking the king, uh, some pins here, knight e6 possible. Yeah. Also, I mean, this yeah, should it, be... It, it, suddenly wow. the bishop on d3 looks quite good. Oh, knight e4. That was unexpected. Yeah, but it's very forcing because you threaten the bishop, right? Yeah, yeah, true. So maybe you have to take. I would even consider bishop b7, but yeah, taking is usually something you have to have to think first. It's possible at least, I don't know. Hmm. Do you have any experience in this uh, kind of positions? Well, I played d4 occasionally, and uh, in Blitz I played uh, these g4 uh, attacks, uh, uh, but I don't know any theory, I just played, you know, uh, mm -hmm. imitating uh, Alexei. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but, um, uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, I, I have some, some experience playing this type of, of, uh, of game, of course. Uh, there is also a g4 gambit in, in the Philidor, you know. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it sort of resembles this game. It's not the same, of course, but it is sort of the same ideas. To be honest, I think Black is doing fine here. Because yeah, it seems to. It, maybe knight e4 wasn't the best move. Maybe knight takes g5 was better with your ideas of sacking on e6, sacking on f7, and so on. Yeah, that looked a little bit more natural just to... I'm not sure though, though if it works because let's say after knight g5 maybe there was uh, queen e7 just course, guarding yeah. guarding all the squares and uh, um, yeah um, but then this is do, then you could do knight e4 and threaten threaten on g7 and you know because I think it's not unimportant if you can exchange the bishop on d6 then the black position gets very uh, yeah sort of uh, hollow <laughs> on the black squares. True, true. So, um, so that was an idea. But now I agree with you. This looks uh, this looks fairly good. It lo doesn't look very dangerous right now, at least. Yeah, and also uh, looking from the uh, time perspective, uh, Mitchell has started to um, use yeah. some of his time because he understands that uh, most likely something went wrong. And, uh, but yeah, I have to say that uh, big up for me because it's a nice opening choice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I like I like gambits. I, I 
I love to play gambits. And when I started playing, I always played gambits, and then I switched over to more normal stuff. But I still. What was your What was your favorite one? Please tell me. When I started playing, well, uh, you know, I I played I. When I started playing, I played knight f3. I didn't know any theory. So with white, I played knight f3 and then c4. And then with black, mm -hmm. I just played some King's Indian stuff. So that's what that was my first experience with openings. But then I started playing e4 and I would play gambit, you know, uh, not the King's Gambit, but I would play like, uh, you know, the Scorch Gambit with c3 and so on, the Göring Gambit. And with black, I would play the Genis, the Schliemann variation and uh, things like that. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I never played any, any of these gambits, but uh, I was a big fan and, well, technically I can say that I still is. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Banco gambits and uh, kind of Benoni setups. And I know that uh, our youngsters, including uh, Mitalis as well, who is playing with White this game, he also plays the Banco gambit. So uh, yeah. the spirit of... Uh, this aggressive uh, aggressive chess in um, in the opening stage uh, remains, and that's yeah, yeah. it's nice nice to see. I, I think it's more aggressive now than it used to be because with the computers you can go into very complex lines. And sure. in the old days, you tried to avoid you know complex complex lines that were not possible to calculate. But today, yeah. people, people go into that type of position much more than they used to do. So, yeah, I played a lot of Benonis, but not so much the, the Benke or Volga, as we say in Sweden, the Volga game. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we haven't, um, I haven't played that so much. Uh, I played it with White uh, when I played D4, but... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so what do you think about the game now? It's, it's sort of taken another twist here. It's become something different, right? Um, why, yeah, why I is think sort of exchanging pieces now. It's a bit strange. Yeah, this is uh, definitely not the right uh, the right path. You usually play this position, but um, maybe, maybe now a move like King F8 is is rather annoying because you threaten to play Rook C7. Hmm. I would even consider Bishop D7 just exchanging this slash square sure. bishop followed yeah. by Queen D7, Rook C7, and uh, uh, it looks like just black is, has better development and uh, this H, H2 pawn also uh, doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, I agree with you. It looks, it looks very normal. Just bishop d7 and develop and uh, yeah. So I have to say that, yeah, that's, that's what we see. Um, I have to say that uh, Alva's reaction in many positions, I remember the yesterday's uh, last game in the fourth round. Uh, she played against uh, Reynis Valdez, and uh, uh, you remember that that game where she she had an, two extra pawns, but there was some um, some activity in the center, and her king was somewhere on c uh, c seven. Yeah, she, she had a e five. Yeah, and yeah. she did. Uh, all the reactions were very solid, very concrete, and uh, she just uh, simply got better position. So that's yeah, impressive. And she mani managed to win the opposite colored bishop ending. And it, as we said, it was not so easy. There were some tricks, and but she managed to navigate that. True, true. So that's I guess good. we can uh, move to the yeah, let's do. next game. Um, hmm. Okay, let's go here. Oh. Lots have happened here. Yeah. And uh, it hasn't been so good for white. <laughs> uh, Victor has lost his queen for a bishop. It's not good enough. No, it's not good enough. Unfortunately, he will lose this game, but he's learning. I mean, he's eight years old and uh, yeah, he has very tough opposition. I don't know what happened in this game, but maybe we could just move back and see what, where it all went wrong. Yeah, that was the Sicilian 10 out of, 10 out of line. Um, yeah. So far, um, I'm also playing this opening, so... Yeah, this is normal moves. So, so far, far nothing everything bad. is very solid. Uh, Bishop E2 yeah. is kind of a very standard, classic... Uh, uh, even Kasparov used to play it uh, yeah. from time to time. And this with, is the old line, so to speak. The old, yeah. the old the very old classical line. and um, Might be the best, actually. 
Yeah, as, as I remember, just castles followed by a four. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, many hundreds of games were played there. But Queen D2 is somewhat is a mix of two plants. And now, yeah, and now, after, he, makes, yeah, now he makes the mistake. You he remember uh, this game? By the way, also Alva played it yesterday. That was uh, Maria Kuznetsova played with white and Alva played with black. And uh, Kuznetsova also uh, misplayed this position with, uh, um, with white. Yeah, the, the problem with these lines is you have to know some theory because if you just make moves, you might end up with some. Because black is very true. Uh, true. When d6 is not played, the Sicilian is very dangerous for white because of the bishop coming out. And this happens now with a3 and knight e4. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you played knight a3 in your. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in the very beginning. It, yeah, that was a good move. I mean, uh, you don't know. You don't need to know any theory. You, you just fianchetto the bishop, but you know, Ooh. oh, you get a good position without any work. Yeah, true. Just uh, bring your pieces to the game and then start thinking. Um, avoid necessary fight in the very beginning, while yeah. your pieces are not not yet in the game. So queen d three takes, 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 and ooh, it's getting worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. He, he missed that the, the queen is hanging because queen d1, I mean, you could still fight on, right? The problem is bishop c3 and... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. It, it, it's not good. It, it's bad, but you, you could uh, you could still play. I mean, you're an exchange <clears throat> and a couple of pawns down, but you can play. But with the queen, without the queen, it's very difficult to play. Yeah. I don't think yeah. we have to see more than this. Uh, a pity, but these things happen. You make a mistake and suddenly everything just goes... Bonkers. You know, happened. Tom, as, as a grandmaster, you know that uh, it is extremely tough to choose. Uh, it's easy to choose uh, from two good continuations, but you, when you have to choose less of evil, it's uh, pretty That's tough, very right? different, yeah. Especially you know, for I, kids. Yeah, I, I always, when I explain chess to people that don't play, I, I say that chess is like walking on, an, on the edge of a knife. There are exactly. many, many bad moves in every position, but there are only usually maybe only one good move or a couple of decent moves, but you don't have lots of good moves and, and just, you know, no losing. There, there are always lots of ways to lose. So this is the problem to play chess. You have to always walk this knife and uh, don't, don't make any mistakes. Uh, and uh, I have to add, that especially in Sicilian defense, especially. Yeah, then it's, then it's, <laughs> it's really, really sharp edge on this knife. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's take the next game, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's move on, um, for instance, here. So what is that? I think we have seen something similar. Yeah. And it was Arvid also the, the last time, right? Yes, exactly. This could be the London system. It looks like it could be. Um, hmm. So I think uh, that was the same position. Yeah, same game, same thing. Same thing, absolutely the same thing. But it looks like right here. Uh huh. Uh, Arsons uh, decided not to bring his bishop to f5. Yeah, mm. we, we can we can we can uh, be sure that he had analyzed this uh, Arvid. So, uh, yeah, okay, let's see. But to be honest, I think bishop f5 is so natural. But okay. Yeah, but you know, you don't want to go into your opponent's preparation. These guys are savvy; they know that <laughs> there are computers. What What about b5, b4? It used to be a uh, like the most principal plan in this case now? Yeah. I don't know, actually. Oh, b5, a3, and the uh, rook is protected. I ah, missed that. Ah, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. So knight is doing some really good job here. Okay, yeah, so, so. so this this speaks to your uh, notion that knight bishop f5 is very good. And I agree with that, because the knight is doing good job on c2. Uh, yeah, just imagine the same position with the, the bishop out of of this pawn chain still this position but but i know i know that when you have this type of position that black has if you don't get to play um b5 b4 suddenly your position becomes very stale you have nothing to do it's sort of true uh, 
so, so this is the problem for black that you you might end up with a position where you have not so many active possibilities yeah yeah now it's, and, it's not um and I guess here, one of the main plans for Black was to relocate his knight to the A4. Yeah, that's, that's what you do. You, you, you try to go with the knight there, but yeah. And even sometimes uh, what you do, you're trying to sack on yeah. one you of... You try uh, to sack somewhere and open up. But yeah, it's not just so open. If your opponent plays well, it might not be so easy. But of course, Black has a playable position. Okay, let's see what happened now. Yeah, I really doubt the decision to... Um, not to bring his bishop to out of of the of the yeah that, that was chain of pawns. That was surprising. I agree with you. But yeah, let's see. Maybe it will work uh, good from the c6 square. So let's see. Um, yeah, and Arvid goes for the very logical plan of playing e4 and yes. uh, get some active play in the center. So it's not so easy again without the bishop on f5. It's not so easy to prevent it. No, I thought you have to accept it, I guess. But of course, there will be squares, but maybe you can go to d5 at some point. Yeah, that's actually what happened in the game. And yeah. uh, it's it's not all bad for black. There are some positives. But I think I would prefer white here if I uh, yeah true had to choose yeah. And uh, once again, I'm just so amazed by by the Arvid's, uh, Arvid's style of playing chess, like in his age. Yeah. Uh, wow, that's that's impressive. Yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. how I played in, in his age, and I was like, attack all the time, attack. Just uh, give me some activity. But this guy is, is like, OK, I will fight for squares. Uh, I will fight for the center. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. I, I was also like that, as we said, with gambits and, you know, attacking and trying to mate uh, as soon as yeah, possible. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Check his passport, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so black Black's position is, yeah, it's uh, on the surface not too bad, but, but of course the risk is that you have this, okay, now we can exchange, but yeah. And uh, I want to remind you that we're playing a Shevinian system. And uh, so uh, all players um, has to face each other sooner or later with both colors. And uh, uh, we can look, look a little bit back. Do you remember the first round yesterday? Um, the game between uh, Tolmachovs and Friedman with uh, opposite colors? Uh, I have. I think uh, Arvid lost this game, right? No, it was a draw. Oh yeah, yeah, that was the draw. Yeah, there were three draws and one loss in the first match. That's true. Yeah, that was a draw. Yeah, that was a draw, and uh, yeah, that was a, that was a draw, and it was it was this uh, Petrov game uh, with the uh, bishop on c five against the knight, right? Yeah, yeah, extremely solid game. So it's also looking from this perspective interesting to see how uh, what will happen in yeah uh, in this pair mm. yeah 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 this, this was a game that i think uh, arvid i think he felt that he he played quite well in this game and he, he, as we pointed out he was maybe even better i don't know if he felt that himself but uh, at least i think he he felt that he, he it was a solid game he, he was never in any real danger and he, he, he plays in the same style today. <laughs> hmm. Wow, Knight A5, interesting decision. And um, I think this is actually a right decision not to uh, exchange an active knight to the passive knight. True. Uh, but I have to say that uh, Archams right now is spending much more time compared to uh, Arvid. So he yeah. hasn't under the three and a half minute while Arvid is doing great in terms of time and also I, in terms I think of position. For, for Archons, I think he, he it, it didn't go the right way for him in the opening. He didn't get his breakthrough on the queen side. And so he's trying uh, and he's succeeding in a way to, to compensate for that. Uh, he hasn't fully done that yet, but uh, but... I don't see any big danger for black in this situation. It's sort of long-term dangers, maybe. Uh, okay, Tom, may I ask you this question? 
Yeah. Uh, if you have only three words to describe the character of this position, three words, uh, what you would say? Just after bishop d5, bishop d5, <laughs> please. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I would say it's, it's sort of a fixed structure. Um, it's not a closed position because there are open. Uh, this is more than three words. It's already like a couple of. Yeah, seconds. but but the first the first word is fixed structure. Fixed, fixed okay. structure. I would say that two two words. Okay, two. And, and Good and enough the, with the, sec the second the second thing I would say that. Uh, yeah, I would give give white maybe a very slight advantage, but maybe not after bishop takes d5. I'm not so sure about that anymore. I would say it's a, it's an equal position. Mm, yeah. So shall we move to the next game? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is something. This is Ooh. something. Um, okay. So the game between Kuznetsova and Matias Sakic. <clears throat> Well, it's a mate threat. It's a mate threat. Yeah. Um, Grandmaster, Grandmaster decision, Grandmaster review. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. That's my that's my professional uh, view of the position. It's thre threatening yeah. mate one. Yeah. And also an extra pawn for for black, right? Yeah, but that that's a point. I'm, that's a point. Actually, I'm two. Sure, you want to take every every time. Actually, two pawns. Two pawns. Yeah, it's two pawns. To be precise. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure about this queen b3, though. Well, it's an obvious idea, but uh, I can see many problems. Knight c5, for instance, what happens after that? I think after knight c5, I'm playing queen b4. And if you go, let's say, knight a6 back, I take no, I play a6. a5. I play a5. 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 Yeah. So I if want I go to queen b6. Six. Yeah, just go for your queen, try to expel it. Um, yeah, then most likely I have to go queen a3 after um, after knight, knight c5. Yeah. But is it possible after knight c5, uh, queen a3 to play knight a4? Maybe, but you could also do something else because white is not threatening to take the knight. You can just... But of course, white threatens to play something like rook e1 and take on e6. So, yeah. Ooh, ooh. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Knight d4. Yeah. And now, if you take on b7, it's rook b8, and then it's mate with. Queen, queen f7. Ah, oh, it's queen f7. Ah, oh, you have to castle probably, yeah? Is that the. Is, or is there something else? No, I think queen b7 and. Oh, but this is very sharp. I mean, yeah, uh, I'm not sure knight d4 was the best move actually. Yeah, because Although, you know this knight was under under the attack. Yeah, but you should counter attack with knight c5. I think that was better. Actually, uh, I thought for a while about knight c5, but looks like it's not working. Knight c5, then I just take yeah, one, take two, and go back. And yeah, yeah, I don't think. There is also knight d3 hmm. at some point, you know, protecting yeah. and attacking. The knight is in the way. Yeah, I thought about queen, uh, sorry, not queen, but uh, rook h e1. Yeah, you can play that now. What, what happens? Then you have to play queen f6, I guess. Wow, very sharp. But, uh, or maybe just knight d3 followed by queen a6. But by the way, after. Knight d3, is there a knight c5 idea? But you, yeah, maybe. Uh, this is extremely sharp. But wow. knight d3, knight c5, yes. If you take on c5, you have rook b8, maybe. But, then but you maybe, can... maybe I can take on e5, though. Yeah, of course, yes. Yes, yes, yes. But that, that, that position is not clear. That's not a clear position. And both players has uh, 2 minutes and 50 seconds. So in terms of time, very balanced. In terms of position, uh, whoa, 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 what is this? <laughs> is it the chess? Still a chess or so, some other So game? I have to ask you then, with three words, can you characterize this position? Imbalanced, very <laughs> imbalanced. <laughs> I guess that, that should be enough. Crazy, I would say it's a crazy position. Sharp, sharp, crazy, imbalanced. 
Yeah, and I, I, I just have this feeling that they don't really have control here. No one has control, right? Yeah, and what usually happens, uh, let me ask you, as a, a strong grandmaster with uh, big experience, what usually happens in case when both players doesn't have a control over the board? Well, anything can happen, I think. Uh, it depends. It's a lot about temperament and, and will, uh, you know. Yeah. And also, and there's, also there's, there's also an element of, you know, bluff. You know. True, true. You, you want to project an impression uh, that you actually have control. Ooh, I really like this move, Rook B8. I think it's this very is forcing. super cool. I think you have to take on e5 now, right? Yeah, I think so. Or is there something else? Like, I don't know. I don't think so. But I think rook e5, rook b7, if you go back with a rook, maybe I even can go for something like knight e2 and then take on b2 and attack your king. Um, look, look for some discover attack. Ooh, ooh what is this? Still... Uh, not it is clear extremely at all. sharp, but I, I agree with you. I, I like the rook b8 move. Uh, the alternative was to play queen f6. I think that's playable also, but this is this is really sharp. Yeah. I think white has to give up some material. Somehow. Yeah, probably, probably. But I would say black has a very good chances to, to score. Yeah, I mean, black is a pawn up and uh, he has the attack and if nothing else, he can actually take another pawn now when the rook moves because g4 is hanging. So, but probably there is better, as you said, there are better moves. This one reminds me a little bit of Volga having this powerful bishop on g7 and yeah. uh, open b file, attacking b2 pawn. Um, this this triangle. This looks yeah. like a very serious. Uh, a little bit of geometry in our stream. Absolutely, yeah. It's, uh, so the question is here, do we have something uh, winning immediately. immediately? I don't see that now, but uh, there could be some move, very strong move. Or should black just you know, continue to play well, play maybe even take on g4 just to uh, take another pawn and, and then yeah, maybe. retreat to f5 with the knight, just you know, play simple chess. Or should Black do something radical like, uh, well, I guess you can uh, double the rooks on the B file, for instance. Oh, okay, E5, yeah. That's I what. like E5. Yeah. As a grandmaster, I would just simply have taken on the G4, but I think E5 also is very playable, very aggressive. Oops. Yeah, I, I thought taking on G4 or E5, those were my, my sort of favorite moves in the position because they, they cannot be bad and, and, and you, you just improve your position. So so now you can play e4 maybe. Yeah, I think uh, the march of, of the pawn in the center is... And, and you know, now, now suddenly f6 could be irritating also. f6 could be... Well, maybe not, not now maybe, but uh, at some point because the knight on g5 is not so stable. Yeah. Wow, just look at this. The pawn on g4 is already for uh, like... For grabs, up for grabs. Moves. Or even more under attack, yeah. even more like six or seven moves, and no one cares about the pawns. Just look at how how well, I, I think youngsters this, playing chess. I think this this is um, this is really great play by Black. But what if knight d three? Can I play yeah, knight d three? Yeah, he, he might have missed that. I don't know. But uh, I mean, you could just take there, right? If you want to take on c two. Yeah, this looks very good. So how do you how do you go from this to the next level, so to speak? Oh, he plays this. Well, I'm not so sure. I think I think this way. <laughs> yeah, may, maybe I I'm not so sure because I, I I don't see the mate coming. But maybe maybe there is a mate. I would play knight d three in this uh, in this position. Knight d three. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Oh, but uh, but you can take on d3. Just yeah, simply. I can take. But then, you, yeah, yeah, because you, if you take on f3, it's lost. Yeah. yeah so maybe is, just knight f3. 
Now you, you threaten to take on D2 and take on F4. You take threaten to take on B2. It's ah. Oh. Yeah, Maria just resigned. So yeah, um, that yeah. was that was that was uh, unfortunate for her because I believe that she was better in this game in the opening. That's my feeling, but something went wrong at some point. She she let's look at it. Yeah. Okay, so that was uh, Karakhan line, uh, bishop f5, h4, first move. Yes. Uh, so, well, one of the recent fashions, I think. Not recent uh, already for quite a while, but I always thought that uh, black is doing pretty much fine. Okay, white has uh, some small, small advantage, but... Um, but yeah, if... You give time enough time for Black to consolidate to bring their minor pieces to the game. That should be should be good enough. Yeah, and then at some moment she just oh yeah, so she blundered two central pawns. Usually it's not not a good sign. Yeah, so, uh, because uh, I, my my experience uh, against the Carl Cannon against uh, the French is that these positions, uh, close positions, uh, are usually better for White. Um, Let's look at the next game because uh, it looks very tense. And uh, uh, Vingris has one minute while uh, Alva Link Tran has um, only 12 seconds left. What is going on here? Yeah. Uh, when we left uh, before, um, she had. That was one. this semi slap game. Yeah, she, she was better. She didn't have any material advantage. Uh, now she has a slight material advantage, right? She has but yeah, very exchange, imbalanced exchange for a pawn. Uh, but the king on f6, I don't know. It's it's not my favorite place for the king. <laughs> well, usually not. Uh, king king walk, uh, went for a walk. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. So the okay. question is, what happens here? Like knight e2, and then maybe the knight can come to f4 at some point. I don't know. I don't know if that's so dangerous, but uh, knight e2. The problem is queen d1, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Checkmate delivery in on h1 square. So I'm yeah. not really sure. I'm pretty sure uh, she's going to play. Okay, queen d3. Oh, maybe, maybe. No, e5 is not the move. Well, then you can play king f5 if you want to. And then you go to g6. Queen c2 probably is the only move. Yeah, you can play that, but that's lost. That's completely lost. Yeah. Yeah, so this oh. is mate into it. Oh, this is a check. I yeah. missed that. But queen e4 is the threat and uh, yeah. Yeah, she goes for this, but uh, th this should be lost, right? Um, well, I'm not so sure because while both play players has only 10 seconds left. No, it's um, not so clear, but let's say king f5 and go with the king over, it should be. Well, yeah, objectively, of course, this, this should be. Uh, I would go for knight, knight d4, knight b5. Yeah. You can always blunder the rook to a check, so it's it's not clear. Yeah, knight is a very tricky piece. Yeah, let's say something like this. So he yeah. just there you have tries to, to move the king now. King, yeah. Uh... Objectively, everything is lost, but you just have to create some. Yeah, yeah. Let's say b6, king c5, and then uh, knight c4. Is it working? Knight c4. Huh. Yeah, but now you now you you uh, rook a six. I don't like so much. That's a very strange move. That's a bad yeah. move, actually. Can you bring your king somewhere? Yeah. Wow, he does that. Impressive. No, she should have moved the, the king back to b seven at some point. I think maybe play f six and. Yeah, rook is somewhat stuck, and you can't really come closer with the king because of b seven. Yeah, so, so you, move, you, move, you must move the the king back and the rook. But yeah, this looks very, very unpleasant. I mean, of course, you, you yeah, just need your, your rook back. It, it might be a draw this game. Wow. 
Just knight c4, yeah, and this formation doesn't look very perspective. But now you should but, put rook back. I don't know why she has the rook on a6. That's so stupid. I don't like it at all. Uh, yeah, true. I agree. It's hard to disagree in this case. So king comes closer. And now the rook can go around. But then I push a6, a7. And then you put the rook on, on d1, maybe. Oh, uh, yeah. The rook must hmm. always be active. That's the, the main plan here. Ooh, so maybe king c3 and... Uh... Okay, he just goes for the pawn, but now rook can go... Yeah, now you go around. ...to the game. Yeah, rook d8. Activate. No! Again! Oh, what? So what? Why this rook? Uh, what this I don't rook know. Is I don't know. I don't know. I cannot explain it, but it's yeah, it's painful to see. You have the heart attack. You have a... yeah. This, that was a minor heart attack. Every time she puts the rook on a6, and now she's probably lost. Wow. Yeah. Now it's lost. I think <laughs> you cannot save it. No. Uh, can we have uh, please our engineer? Can we? Oh, yeah. This is. Can we? This. Oh, oh. oh what was that? That was a that was a mouse slip. Oh my lord. Yeah, that oh. was really what sad. a drama. What yeah, a that, drama. Was, that was now that. now I'm having a heart attack. Yeah, this uh, was a heart attack. This was a heart attack for all the trainers. Oh my lord. I, I wanted to say, can we uh, can our engineer make a, a hashtag in our um, live show heart attack or something? <laughs> because we are but, but, we shouldn't Almost be too nice. harsh. It's very difficult to play with 10 seconds. Sure. And if you don't see what you can do, you, you just make a move that doesn't lose immediately. So I understand why it happened like this, but it's, it's sort of a sad ending to the game. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, he had played so well and he could just play A6 and it would be completely over. So, yeah. Sad. Yeah, that is, uh, that is something... That, oh, um, we have opposite color bishop ending again. Yeah, this but although should be an draw. easy draw. Yeah, it's a dead draw. Uh, so, whom you would like to see uh, on our interview? Well, uh, who wants to come? <laughs> who anyone? wants to come? Who? Anyone? First, first uh, to say they want to come, they can come. Yeah, it so would be nice if we could have everyone today at at least at one point. Um, so yeah, true. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about uh, about the players. Um, I mean, Vingris and um, uh, that game because it was a very big drama. Yeah, they so. probably need to to calm down. Yeah, true. And again, draw between Arvid and Archams. So in this mini match, we have a one-one result. Yeah, and very solid games. Also, this seems to have been a very solid game. We saw the opening uh, carefully played by both players. And uh, yeah, true. You can sort of imagine what happened here. At some point, Black cho chose to go into this one, and he saw it was an easy draw. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, so I would say that uh, if Mattia can join, it would be very nice because that game was very impressive. Yeah. Uh, so actually, your team is doing very well. At least start uh, started to in the first round of. Well, it was it was a win, two and a half, one and a half, right? If this is a draw. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, So yeah, that's a little bit a step in the right direction for the team. Um, again, very interesting games, I would say. True. Uh, some some mistakes uh, due to time, uh, and this is the rapid format. It's it's uh, it's difficult. You have to switch from playing and using quite a lot of time. You can do that in the middle game, maybe, but then suddenly in the end game, you have to play uh, instantaneously, and it's very difficult. 
I don't I'm, know why they play this. Uh, the, the yeah, guys. I wanted to note they, that uh, guys are still playing and only now uh, Arvid offers for a draw. Yeah. And, yeah. It might have been that he was better at some point and, and then he felt that he sort of had the moral right to try, but there was no trying left in the position. So the score after round five is eight and a half to 11 and a half, right? Yes. Uh, a lot of drama in this round, so. Yeah, I don't know which was, I, I think the game between, uh, uh, I think the Maria, she lost her game. This was a very interesting game actually uh, against uh, Mate. Yeah. That, that, that was an interesting game. So if Mate would like to come and, and talk to us, that would be interesting. But of course, she made a, a very big blunder in this position where she gave away two, two pawns. I mean, the, she gave uh, gave him the attack here and, and it was no survival. Yeah. That. Neither I mean, four is... Uh, yeah, is I the mean, the whole, the whole point of White's play is to to contain the, the, the black bishop and play on the black squares. And my, yeah, my, unfortunately. Personal, my personal view is that uh, th this can be very promising for White. Uh, but of course, if, if White drops the pawns in the center, it's not so, not so good anymore. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I have to say that the game between Arvid and uh, Artyoms was something like... Um, if I see some game like this, um, I could think like this is the game between two grandmasters in some uh, Isle of Man tournament or something. Um, yeah, it could be. You know, yeah, like 2500, you know, you know, some uh, strategic fight. Then he tries to bring his knight to b3, uh, just improving the position of his pieces. Okay, now I have to go back, then some exchanges. You know, some exchanges in the very solid, very, very solid uh, position. Um, so shall we go to the, uh, to some small break? No, right. I think we should take a break. Um, As we have no interviews, so yeah, let's, maybe. let's take a break. Let's take a break. And if, if something happens, we get someone, then we can rejoin. Yeah, yeah, I so, think. So, uh, 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 Daniel, you can show, you can roll the the presentation.
Okay, so we are back and uh, we're having Karenis Valdas, the only hero from the Latvian team in this round. And uh, we're going to have a short interview with him uh, just before the next round starts. Uh, ciao, Reini. Ciao. Uh, kā tu jūties pēc, pēc uzvaras? Labi, dzirdēt. Pastāstīsi nedaudz par savu partiju? Jā, labi. Labi. Tātad, um, jums bija sicīliešu aizsardzība. Jā, nesen sāku spēlēt paulsena varianti. Aha, pavisam nesen? Nu, ne, pavisam nesen, kad nē, nesen atpakaļ varbūt. Pirms tam spēlēju, tā kā es sešu zirgs, tad sešu un dēļ sešu. Naidarbs cenās tur. Mm, interesants. Un uh, līdz kurām brīdīm tu uh, tā kā vēl orientējies teorijā? Tev bija kaut kāda zināšanas? Nu, tad Dante septiņā sešu zināja, jo es zirgs ar sešu lēmu, tad četri arī. Un D5, tad jau es parasti kaut kad eju. Aha, un mēs, kad mums bija, kad mēs skatījāmies partiju tiešraidē, mēs domājām, ka Dama D2 nav īsti labākais gājiens, tāpēc, ka... Jā, es skatījos, man likās, ka viņš ir okāds teisīs. Jā, jā. Jā, man Dama D2 arī patika, ka viņš pagāja, jo tāpēc lai D4, nu, neizmēr uz vienu pusi, viņš to kā nevar uztaisīt, D5 draudz, nu, pievienā viņš ir paiet ap 3. Mhm. Jā. Nu, lai bet četri, dam bet divi, lai bet četri, un viņš paiet ap trīs, tad bet pieci jau. Jā, tieši tā. Uh, es tad ātri pārtulkošu. Uh, yeah, so the one critical thing we discussed during the live show that uh, Queen D2 is probably not the right move and uh, as we remember from old times there is a, a short castle following by F4 and uh, yeah, Rainey says that uh, he was a little bit amazed but um, he, although he also liked the, the Queen D2 but short castle is stronger. Uh, and tad pēc uh, dama D2 Sanāca, ka bija ļoti daudz piedzīvojumu Baltiem. Nu, jā, nu. Un, ja viņš būtu nospēlējis F3, tad tu būtu spēlējis D5. Jā. Jā. Tādā, man bija viena, vienā turnīrā tāda partija ar Mariju Kuznicovu. Mm, ar Mariju Kuznicovu jūs spēlējāt šo pozīciju? Nu, diezgan līdzīgi bija. Jā. Mm. Aha. Un pēc A3... Uh, es biju nedaudz uh, pārsteigts ar visiem, uh, ar visiem upuriem, ja to no, var nosaukt par upuriem, jo pēc dāma D3 sekojas sitiens, tad vēl zirgsē 5, tieši miljonas draudi no visām pusēm. Nu jā, nu vairs C3 draudi. Jā, un uh, man ļoti interesē, ko tu būtu uh, mēģinājis izdarīt ar, no Balto puses šeit? O, es nevienu. <laughs> nu, kad no dāma D1 un uz lēmas C3, nu, ko vēl ir tāda nopurē? Mm-hmm. Jā, mēs arī uh, runājām ar otru komentātoru Tomu, un viņš padēc, ka, nu, es ticamāju, ka jau jāspēlē dāma D1. Es arī tad to partalkošu. Uh, so, do you remember, uh, in this moment, during the live show, we, Tom Wedberg said that, okay, this uh, position looks pretty poorly, and most likely Queen D1 is, should be the, um, the best try in White's position. And I asked Rainis uh, what he would try with White, and after uh, <laughs> sound, he said, uh, most likely Queen D1, but it, it is already pretty much over. Uh, nu labi, tātad mums ir uh, tikai 5 minūtes līdz uh, nākamai kārtai. Um, varbūt bija vēl kāds brīdis, Reini, um, par ko tu gribētu pastāstīt šajā partijā vai? Jā, tad es neredzēju, ka es domāju, ka es jau to nedabūju. Tad Karolis divus, nu, no, no, jau baigi labais gājums, bet viņš no to nezaudē. Jā, tu biji domājis, ka Tu līdz jau partija beigsies, un tad pēkšņi tš, un tornis ir... Es redzēju šito gājumu, es redzēju, nu, es nezinu, cik labi ar baltējumu tāpat. Kā mm. jau tāds centrās var D5, D4, D4, nu, tad ir viņš visu būt. Kaut kāds tornis dēļ 
Bet pēc tam tu realizē ļoti kvalitatīvi. Vienkārši pabeidz attīstību un tad ar visām figūrām, centrā un pat sanāca tā, ka viņam zirdziņš trapījās pēc... Jā. Uh, uh, es skatījos šitajā te, ka pēc B6, es noteikti būtu pagājis dāmdē 6, dāmdē 7, uh, vienīgi man nepatika zirta piekri. Un tad, ja es ar laimi nomainu, tad tas laimi saizmogunīgi vairs viņš noķert no vairs. Mhm, jā. Bet tad jau zirta piekri es vēl četri vienkārši pārējā, jo man nav zirta dāma. Zirgs F5 un tad E4, jā? Ja? Nu jā, vienkārši, ja dāma uz D6 vai E7 stāv, tad zirgs uzbrūkē dāma, ja mēs nav tāds gājums. Labi, un tad pēdējais jautājums tev, kā tev patīk šīs formāts un kādas tev ir emocijas izraisa? Mm. Nezinu. Nu, labi. Uh, tad mēs novēlam tev veiksmi, lai viss izdodās, un vēl trīs, trīs partijas priekšā, tā kā, lai viss izdodās. Labi, paldies. Labi, čau. Uh, tad tev tagad jānospiež Leaf. Jā. Yeah. Jā, yeah, so, um, short interview with uh, the only hero from the Latvian team. In this round... All of them are heroes. Well, they are all heroes. Yeah, true. Uh, so, yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, what did he say about the opening? Because, obviously, the, this was uh, decided very early, this game. Yeah, so, pretty much everything that we uh, discussed during the game. So, he said that he was expecting short tussle. Uh, and in case of uh, Queen D2, how was in the game? Queen D2, Bishop uh, B4. He was expecting F3 and then uh, D5. So yeah, uh, yeah. the very, very healthy variation. And the only very interesting thing he said was um, that he actually started to play this system not very long time ago, like only one month ago. Oh. Yeah, so it's kind of new for him. Although he already had an experience playing against Maria Kuznicova. And um, that was the game between between them were somewhat similar to, to this one. Yeah. And yeah, we we wish uh, we wish um, good results and good games to all all the players. We know they're uh, under the time pressure. Uh, they're under the pressure of uh, showing good results. And that's okay. Yes, very good. So the games should start very soon in just a couple of minutes. Uh, eight and a half against 11 and a half, as I remember. Uh, still, I guess there is a pretty huge intrigue in, in the match from the uh, competitive point of view, but on the other hand, it's just a friendly event, so... Uh... Yeah, I think uh, the match has been a success so far. Uh, I'm very impressed by the, the level of play in these games and the dedication by the players, uh, and also the fact that they have prepared so well. I mean, the, their trainers must have uh, done a very good job with them, because... Uh, True. They know so much, and they—it's uh, not only like book knowledge. It's uh, they understand the game, and they know. Uh, they have explained why they play the moves, and uh, it's, it sounds all very good and, and uh, solid, so to speak. So that's really impressive. So shout out to the trainers. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure they are watching. <laughs> Hundred percent agree with you, and especially as a good uh, example of what we're uh, thinking about, the mini-match between um, Friedman and Tomachov shows everything. Pretty much um, yeah. like how, how good is the preparation is, what kind of decision they make during the, the game. And this is not the uh, classical game, not the standard time control. It's uh, pretty short. 
yeah, pretty yeah. short, uh, rapid, and uh, yeah. the quality of, of decision making is uh, well somewhat impressive. Yeah, I agree. I agree, and uh, also the dedication and um, the stubbornness of sticking to your plans and um, not trying to play on time or anything like that, and playing seriously. Yeah, it's great. True, true, and um, yeah. We have next round starting right now. Right now, Artyom Stolnachov's playing against Alva Link Tran. Um, and by and the way, we're seeing, seeing the same. Op ah, oh, we get the Khan again. Yeah, we have a Khan uh, against whom was that game yesterday? Khan. Aha, uh -huh, in G3 setup. That's what I used to play in the old days. It's a it's a solid setup. That's actually pretty funny, Tom, because uh, usually I'm the one who's playing this position with black. Yeah. Uh, with only one exception, uh, having knight on c6, um, and you're the one who <laughs> who normally plays this position with uh, white. I and, used to uh, play it. I used to play basically because. Um, Fisher used to play G G three in these mm -hmm. uh, in these lines, and I tried to uh, get some good ideas from him. I thought he had a very nice style, and um, so this uh, this was my choice. Um, now I, I I'm not so fond of the G three. I played it so much that I sort of got fed up with it and try mm -hmm. other setups, but uh, it's still very solid for sure. Um, it, my view about this G3 setup in Sicilian that this is not very aggressive. So I always thought, um, like we saw in the previous round, bishop e2, bishop e3 is more aggressive, uh, or bishop e3, queen d2. So at least I thought, maybe this is not truth, but at least uh, from my perspective, I always thought that um, uh, this is rather um, more solid for, for white. And yeah, it's solid. I, I think options. one of the appeals for white is just the fact that it's solid and uh, you get your pieces out and uh, and then you play, so to speak. It's it's not uh, usually not a knockout uh, opening, mm -hmm. and you don't play for g4 very very early. You you sort of uh, develop and uh, play more uh, sort of controlling game with a4 and so on. Um, so yeah, it's. Uh, uh, it's it's an interesting opening, but I, I think it's it's not the most challenging for black. And h5 is actually a very good response. Uh, very I just wanted to say, I just wanted to say, Tom, uh, I didn't want to interrupt you, but h5 is an absolutely top choice for me uh, in this kind of positions. Yeah. Maybe not in this exact position, because after bishop a7, white has a... Um, Mm, pretty interesting strategical resource, bishop f4, claiming that, um, well, my friend, why your bishop is uh, someone, what is this bishop doing on a7? I will. Yeah, I, I think for... maybe bishop e7 would have been better after knight b3, because as you say, bishop f4 is a bit irritating. Or you have, you need to have your knight on c6 to meet uh, bishop f4 with knight e5. Yeah and, yeah, and then playing d6. So yeah. that's and uh, again, I'm very impressed by by the reaction of thinking uh, of these guys because they are just uh, around 12 years old or uh, even less, right? Or less, or less. Yeah, like Victor is only eight years old, and uh, we see this um, way of. Uh, analyzing okay i know this position then i know this position so in this case bishop is not doing fine here so i can fight for uh for these squares impressive and the problem with e5 right now would be that um e5 bishop g5 and uh after playing e5 the d5 squares uh, square uh, weakening very much so yeah this, after... this is really a dream dream come true for, for black yeah. No, for white, I mean, um, to get this in, usually you never get to play this um, uh, as effectively as in this position. Okay, she plays e5, but that means she's accepting a, a knight on d5. Uh, it's, 
it will be a hard game for her. Uh, to be honest, I think this is the best reaction uh, because oh, yeah, because if, after if that, go... yeah, I think I think so too. I agree with you, but uh, but it's uh, it's not it was not a nice uh, choice. Uh, not enjoyable. Shouldn't no, be no, enjoyable. No, no. So let's say d6 takes takes knight d5 queen d8 um, queen of three knight d7. Yeah, so should be a tough. Pretty tough uh, position for Halva. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think she, she will be, she will be fighting for, for, uh, for a draw here. Um, uh, everything has gone wrong for her in the opening, and I, I think it happened because she played without uh, thinking so much. She, she yeah, played true. It pretty fast. Bishop a seven came almost automatically. Uh, and I think the reason is that G3 is not so common against the Khan. It's much more common against the Taimanov. And when you play it against the Khan, it's a bit different. And you cannot use the same plans like putting the bishop on A7. So I think that was the reason. So it was... Uh... Yeah, uh, Tom is speaking about this position, move five. So normally... In most of the cases, uh, White's going for either. Well, the knight, would, the knight would be on c6, and a6 would not be played. I think that would yeah. be the Instead most. Of... But you can play it against the con also, of course. And, and but but that means that black has to adjust. So yeah, true. Is... Um, I always thought if black is playing, um, sorry, if white is playing uh, g3. In this case, then uh, bishop b4 without uh, c4 is a very nice reaction of black. Yeah, you can do that. I, I'm not so sure it's really that dangerous in this, this situation, but... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, the thing is, you have to play uh, bishop d2, I guess, yeah. and then black plays knight c6, so at least they... Um, yeah, and then yeah. Knight has to go back, so at least you got your uh, your minor pieces to the game real quick yeah. with uh, some tempies. Yeah, yeah. Black should play something like that, of course. Yeah. So um, now this this uh, the, the, she, she's following the, the main plan against uh, Bishop D three instead of G three with Bishop C five and Bishop A seven and so on. But uh, this this uh, did not go well. So let's see what happened in the game. Let's see how this continued. Yeah, I think after uh, bishop d bishop g five, um, yeah, Alba played d six, and um, yeah, so maybe we can move on to the next game. Yeah, let's do that. So I guess um, okay, maybe Reynis Valdez against uh, Matia. Yep. So both of them did very good job in the previous round. So let's see what what is going to happen in this one. So well, I expect some knight c3 having triple fork. <laughs> well, I guess white will protect against this one because it looks a bit disturbing. Maybe play some move like king c2 or something. Yeah, king c2 looks very natural. And then mm. uh, and then it's it's an interesting fight. I mean, black has more pawns in the center, but on the other hand, white can pressure on the e file. And uh, I'm not so sure about this knight on b5. Is it a good knight or not? I mean, it's uh, sort well, of. I think after you can relocate it to. Of course, of course, of course. There, so there's also some problem with the h5 pawn. I mean, this is. At some point, you need to to act activate your rook, and uh, the pawn is hanging. So, but maybe this is solid for black. Uh, to be honest, I think uh, black is doing fine here. I don't maybe. see a reason um, because it's easier to to make a progress for black, I think, than for white. Let's say rook h six followed by e five. Yeah, but you know, I, I'm I'm thinking that white could. Maybe move the knight from f3 at some point and play f3 and start uh -huh. attacking e6. So I don't, I'm not sure what's happening here. But as soon as you go back somewhere, I'm just pushing e5. No? Yeah, but uh, it, it's white's move here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So white has to find a good move. Um, not so easy, not so easy. Very complicated strategic fight. Interesting. So, um, yeah. 
But I would choose black, to be honest. I would play with black this position. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I'm not so sure about it because even if you play e5, there will be a weak pawn on e5. Let's say you play something really naive. Uh, move the, yeah, you could go, he played knight d2. Yeah, that was not my choice, but okay. Yeah, the point is, um, I play e5 right now. And uh, I think black should be happy. Yeah, maybe. <coughs> you take on e5? Yeah, so e5, let's say, takes on e5, takes on e5. No, I take on e4. I take on e4. After taking on e5 twice, I take on e4. Yeah, okay. You take with a knight, I guess. Mm -hmm. Don't take with a pawn, because then you lose the knight on d6, maybe. Yeah, I take with the knight. And then knight d3, threatening f3. And you have your weak e5 pawn. It's not so easy for the black. But I think I can somehow play rook g8. And I should have tons of compensation in this position. It's just super hard to believe that uh, white is doing fine. Like these juicers and f2 and g2. Yeah, I, I, I'm, just, I'm just saying that it's not clear cut. Uh, True, true, true. Okay. okay, we get it now. We can see what happens. Yeah, so e5. I think I would take on e5 now. Mm, yeah, I think so too. You, you can take on e4 first, of course. That, that's it, it will be the same position, I think. Yeah, maybe even a little bit more trick here. And uh, well, I guess you take with the knight. Uh -huh. And now... I guess you take on e5. Yeah, for one second I thought about d takes e5, f takes e5, and knight d5. For one second. So you take, I take with a rook, you have to move your knight back, and then I take on e5. So, and I have. Yeah, this, uh, this is interesting. So you get th three pawns for the piece. But my pawns are really not advanced, so I guess it's not worth going there. No, it's not clear. But at least it's interesting. Interesting you know, uh, try. In the ending, pawns can be as much worth as as a knight. I mean, the knight can be bad sometimes in the ending. But uh, I don't think that's true here. And with the rooks, I don't think it's. So, yeah, this would be this this. We'll see if it takes on d five. That would be very interesting. Very very. Uh, Difficult decision to make, I would say, but maybe maybe it's good. Maybe if you if you think that white is worse, maybe that's the right way to go. I'm not sure, but another interesting decision after f takes e5 would be knight g6, rook goes somewhere, knight e5, uh, followed by f3. But after knight takes e5, I can take on g2. I can take on c6. Then you can take on c6. True. Yeah. yeah maybe maybe you're right. Yeah. Like this, this, and this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's true, yeah. But maybe from strategical point of view, after f takes c5, I'm pretty sure we will see because uh, I'm not sure why why Matia spending that much time after rook e5, there's knight g6, right? So f takes e5 should be on the board and then maybe knight h3 with the idea to um, occupy. Go f3 and knight g5, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Also, knight d3 is a possibility uh, after f takes e5 with the idea f3. Very simple idea, just to try to win the e pawn. Yeah. So, uh, but then you can play rook g8 and f3, knight f6, maybe or knight d6. You know what? Why was the reason why I like knight h3 more? Uh, just because of I have extra option of uh, pushing c4, undermining the. Yeah. Black center. So right now knight h3 followed. So by it seems it seems like that you're coming around now and thinking that white is better here, right? Uh, <laughs> maybe. Yes. <laughs> no, but I, I, I'm not so sure about black. I mean, okay, he has these pawns, but they are quite vulnerable. That's my that's my only that was my only point before. Uh, like I think in general, position is very balanced. 
So and uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's true, but balanced, but with lots of possibilities, right? It's uh, it reminds me a little bit position with uh, hanging pawns. Yeah, you know, yeah. very 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 similar. So yeah. we can say that uh, um, the side who has a, a hanging pawns, they're losing or. Uh, have some bad no 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 I mean no one is losing in this position I don't think so yeah so very very you know, equal fight who, who who can who can get the upper hand uh, here and, and uh, True. yeah yeah if black managed to uh, consolidate and uh, sort of put the pressure on on white here he, he's better of course but uh, another uh, interesting idea Tom would be yeah. to play knight b4 attacking c c6 and d5 and then under my c4 yeah yeah this is also possible yeah yeah the, the blacks blacks pawn formation is not super solid it's it, it's possible to attack it that's the problem and the knight on e4 is a little bit like in the petrof you know you have this knight on e4 but you want oh to... wow oh wow c5 c5 is definitely not something i really like what about f3 now yeah, for instance. Now everything after. is weak. Now I think white is actually clearly better. Or am I completely? No, I think think it's correct. Yeah, yeah. You win a pawn, and then uh, I mean that's yeah, and already on the board. Wow. Yeah. What? What on earth is going on? After playing f three, you offer the draw. White offered to draw. That's very strange. At the point when he has managed to... No, to wait, to please. Home. Tell me that this is some chess comeback. That, I mean, that, maybe, that maybe, can be truth. I don't know why. Maybe he felt that his position was bad. You know, this is the typical thing. And finally, when you see that, ah, it's not so bad, you offer a draw. Uh, but are they allowed to offer draws after 27 moves? That, should, they, that shouldn't be allowed. I think that the, the draw offer should be forbidden after uh, you reach the age of 15, at least. <laughs> it's something Seriously. you get as you mature. You get this way to opt out of the games, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, when I was uh, playing in Corsica, uh, mm -hmm. like five years ago, uh, there was a very, a very cool rule that you can't offer for a draw. Like, you just doesn't have this opportunity. There, so, there is no, no draw ever, right? No, not at all. So uh, the only way how to uh, make a draw basically is a threefold repetition. Uh, mm -hmm. Either, um, either uh, what do we have, stalemate? Yeah. And that's it, just no draw, draw offer. So yeah. if, it, if it's a draw, then it's a draw. But why I, do I think it's a good rule and, and I, I, I'm... I would have liked it to be uh, be an old rule because there was so many draws at one time in chess, you know, that we had, yeah. I don't know if you remember that, but in the, like in the eighties, you know, you had a top tournament with the top, let's say 12 players. Uh, and there was like in every round, there would be like, you know, one win for maybe and the rest of the games were drawn and mm -hmm. Corpo would win the tournament. He had like three wins and the rest drawn. And, you know, it was, there was no life in tournaments at all. So it was it was not better in the old days. Uh, so I think yeah. this, is, this this rule with uh, forbidding the draw is actually very good. They could have a, a rule like 40 moves. You have to play 40 moves. And then yeah, yeah, game. exactly. So I think this or is... Or you can just very... take it away. You cannot offer a draw. Yeah, of course you took the draw. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. A bit sad for your player because he, he really had a chance here. But... Uh, it maybe could also maybe have something to do with the ratings because I see that there is a rating difference and you know how yeah this I also rated. thought I also thought about that yeah um, then you, you 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 want the draw and you're very happy with the draw and yeah yeah shall we move on what do you say yeah yeah sure oh what is this one ooh it's Victor again and he hasn't lost anything I mean this is is he going to finally take take a point here. Yeah, I think lost, so. Lost one pawn, but that's not so bad. And that's this is a very good example uh, of uh, what we seen in the previous game. So uh, Victor, at least right here in the chess com, his rating is uh, uh, 13, 15. 
Yeah. And uh, Vingris, Vingris is almost um, 25, uh, 20, not 28, uh, 1850. So yeah, yeah, yeah. like it's, it's 500 big... points yeah. difference. And just look at this. He just goes for it. And doesn't matter if he, maybe, hopefully he will not lose. But um, yeah, he's just attacking Black's king and saying, okay, who cares about the rating? Uh, I care about the king, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's very right approach, I think. What happened? Well, it's not so easy. How do you continue here? That's the problem. Should you play knight c7, but then there's a rook takes check, and maybe you don't get so much out of it. I'm not so sure. Ooh. This, this yeah. is really a tricky position. How do you play this? Uh, I would consider something like um, bishop g7. I want to understand what's going on after. Yeah, Bishop I G was looking at that. Also. Do you want to continue with knight c7 then, or what? Yeah, because knight c7, that means, OK, he goes back. And the problem is, uh, we have to mention that Victor is uh, down to three minutes, while yeah. Bingris uh, has a lot of time. So it's, um, it's very easy when uh, we are discussing this position and um, offering we can play like this like this like this but during the game you have to make decisions and uh, this is something completely different from and the also other... I, we have to also mention the fact that uh, victor has lost five games in a row uh, yeah and he's still putting up this fight here and, and playing this well against this guy this is really strong uh, uh, strong showing by him to to not collapse <laughs> under the pressure of these losses so um, true, true. I'm not and sure once that again, is, I'm not sure he's better in this position, but but he he has a, at least he has a playable position and yeah. So, but he's fighting very well. Yeah. Uh, and once again, has, we have to remind that he's only eight years old, guys. Yeah, yeah. Eight years old, and he's playing eight against. Years. And playing this well, years and, he, old. and he's also had the misfortune of running right into preparation, very short preparation by the Latvian players. Uh, Yesterday, Ooh. he lost two games, I think. Well, that was almost preparation, all of it. The Grunfeld and the, and the Nidorf, right? Yeah, yeah, true. So, so he has had, then he has had some misfortunes like today when he lost the Queen. But overall, he's been really ambitious in his games and uh, he knows a lot of theory and he knows how to play, but, but he just haven't made it, managed to make it uh, work. But maybe in this game, he's, he's fighting, yeah. Yeah, he's learning. This, is, he's learning. this is very unclear. Um, it's, it's highly unclear. I mean, he's a pawn down, but that pawn is on a2 and it can be taken anytime. And I think it's very good not to take it immediately because it actually protects the king, right? I like queen d8 move. Yeah, black uh, is playing solidly. I would like to see white maybe at some point, uh, maybe trying to uh, attack the bishop on h4 because that is a weakness in in the uh, in the position for for black um i said that i like uh, queen d8 move but at the same time i really like the wise response of playing c4 just yeah. to stabilize his knight in the center um, yeah the knight is really strong there so i what, what, how how would you evaluate this position what what do you think um, how um, I think the Soviet masters uh, evaluated uh, such positions as dynamic quality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, White has full compensation for this pawn, and uh, we can't even count this position, uh, count this pawn as an extra pawn, right? No. Um, so. I think white is actually a little bit better from practical point of view because uh, you were absolutely right that uh, bishop on h4 is somewhat loose there, so it's hard to bring bring it to the game. If it would be somewhere yeah. on on e5, let's say, that yeah. would be a different story. But in this case, maybe well, they, they exchanged on d5. Yeah. So uh, the rook I'm not c7. Really sure. But maybe maybe it's okay. Maybe it's a good transformation of uh, because it was this knight on d5 was so powerful. So it dominates white's uh, sorry black's uh, light square bishop very much. So maybe it was 
worth to, to get rid of it. And uh, yeah, I would, I, I'm, I'm beginning to think that white actually has a substantial advantage here. Yeah. yeah because, because of uh, now, now there is a, a post pawn on the D file and, and still the, the bishop is not so, so good. But I, I'm, not, I'm not sure about the queen exchange, but anyway, we'll see. It's an interesting game now. I think right here, um, Black's king is not very safe, actually, because at some moment uh, you queen, can... Queen e6, maybe. Yeah, queen e6 and... Uh, Threatening to play queen h3, you know, winning the bishop. Yeah, you have an open h file, so maybe you can create some mating threats and uh, also, I don't know, undermine and open the king even more. Um, so I would not exchange the queens, but uh, I think this is a good exchange for... Uh, for black, so maybe I think like... I think it's good exchange for black, but uh... although although here is a little technical detail. I'm not sure what's going on after let's say rook c4 and uh -huh, e5. Okay, so he protects the, the bishop, so I can take an e5. But let's say some random move. Rook, rook c2. And then e5, yeah, you're right. That's a that's yeah. a trick. That's a trick. And then it could be very unclear. And by the way, rook c2, e5, rook d7, bishop takes f6. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. This it's not clear that, oh, he played rook c2. No, 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 no. Cancel, cancel, abort. <laughs> Please, no. But it's not, it's not, uh, oh, he took there. Huh? Then, then uh, black gets to improve his position, maybe. Yeah. But e5, you know, it's, it's, you saw it, but but it's easy to miss that move because it's never been in the cards. You don't want to play e5 before because then it would the, the bishop would come back. So yeah, true. You true. have to be very sharp to see that uh, easy to miss. And now rook b7 is a threat, so it's not so it's not clear how to play here. Ah, uh, d6, yeah. I like this is d6. Yeah, now now the threat is perhaps to play bishop e7 and then then the d pawn. But you know seven. what? I thought what's going on after rook d7 e5 and uh, rook takes. <laughs> Yeah, e8 yeah, and yeah. e6. Maybe, Most likely maybe. it's not working, but... There is some rook e2 move after that. Yeah. True. It's not so clear how you continue. Yeah, rook d7, and uh, I expect something like bishop c7 or bishop e7. Most likely bishop e7 is better. On the other hand... Bishop e7, c7 has the advantage of... of yeah. He didn't want the rook to go to b7. I understand why he played bishop to c7. Yeah, and actually now rook is trapped. And, uh, yeah, sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black's pieces are so discoordinated. It's true. Uh, so but, Victor is doing a really good job in, in, this, in this match. May, maybe now he can play some bishop. Well, maybe bishop f2 is not so good because of rook g2. Rook g2. And no, but then, then you can take on c7. Now you cannot take on c7. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay, king f7 is a solid move. Yeah, you need to stabilize your position playing with yeah. black and uh, with white. You need to... Huh. You need to keep this, this coordination. Uh, I thought instead of king a3, maybe rook g4 was very interesting. With idea, if you go bishop f2, then I play go... Then I go back and I have a pin. Maybe g5. And after g5, maybe I have e5 and rook, uh, rook a4. Yeah. Or, I don't know, it's... Um... I agree with you. It's, it, it, but it's not so clear. You take on e5, you take on a4. I mean, it's, it will be a fight. It's not clear at all. Now there's oh, but... a check. I don't know. Yeah, I think he blundered bishop c5 because uh, this exchange should be... Good for black. But now, now there is now there are no pro problems for black anymore. Okay, guys, everything who listen uh, our stream, this is uh, the thing. So a couple of months ago, white had a dynamic advantage. So let's say position after bishop c7. This is a dynamic, so-called dynamic advantage. So if uh, because of these coordinated pieces, as soon as uh, you move the bishop, uh, bring it to the game like happens here, and let's say rook b2, king e6, there is no dynamic advantage, and uh, life is good for black. Yeah. So that's the difference with um, static advantage and dynamic one. 
In some uh, the bishop on c7 looks a bit bad. Yeah. It, it, it protects the pawn and so on, but but uh, it doesn't actually do much. It's very defensive. But maybe white shouldn't lose this, I think. Uh, yeah, the question is what and how to play after rook d5. Yeah. <laughs> well, may maybe maybe you can take on d6. Take on. Oh, oh wow, wow! This is cool. This is cool tactics. Because if bishop takes, you have rook a7, rook a5, rook a2, bishop a3, and you can just take everything and probably win the rook ending. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So probably why it should take with the no? Then the, now this bishop takes d6 looks very strong. Yeah, it looks like bishop d6 is it's the winning right? tactics. But he missed that. Yeah. He missed that. He has six minutes and he missed that. And uh, e5 could be somewhere in the air. e5, king e6 takes rook e1. Yeah. Or if he takes, then f7. Yeah, and he, he goes for it. Okay, this was a clear miss for, for Bingris. Clear miss. Now, now you can take on f6, right? Yeah, I mean, just calculate some line, lines because after... This is also possible, of course. Yeah, maybe even better. Could be. Yeah, that, that was a clear miss for, for him. Yeah. Well, this happens. I mean, they are under pressure here from uh, time and, and it's a team competition. You don't want to make mistakes and so on. We are just commentators. We can, <laughs> we can try everything, you know. And uh, yeah. It's easy, yeah, to miss. easy to miss. But this, this is, I mean, this is a great fight. And Victor, this is his best game. He has yeah, really shown, for sure. shown a lot of good uh, good moves here. And I'm, I'm impressed by the fact that he can play well after having lost five games. I cannot play at all after five losses. Yeah, it's very easy to tilt and uh, like lose all, all the games. And yeah, you, you just you, everything is just a blur. You cannot see anything. And yeah, yeah. Tunnel vision and whatever. Everything is just bad. So, but this looks uh, this looks decent. It should be a draw now, I think, under normal circumstances, right? Um, well, we're having you can take on d6 again, but now, yeah, you can still take on d6. Yeah, by the way, in the second chance. Second chance to take on d6. Same same idea, but it's a so, draw time. It's shall a shall we um, shall we offer Victor um, to join us after this game? Yeah, we should. Uh, but maybe we should jump now. We have seen this game. And uh, okay, rook b4. He didn't see it again. Uh, yeah. I dislike this move. Yeah, no. <laughs> maybe he's losing now. Is that the, is that the case? Yeah, I think he's just losing now. You can take on d6 now, also, right? Uh, just to get rid of the pawn. No, I think bishop d6. Yeah, and then you move the rook. No, I mean bishop d6 and uh, rook d6, no? Uh, yeah, but then you take and then you get the rook, uh, bishop against rook, right? Uh -huh, okay, so bishop f2. So I'm, just, I'm just thinking for a draw, you know, to secure the draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Because if you make too many moves, but maybe this is okay now, rook f4, yeah. Okay, so we have this game. <gasps> Ooh. Is it winning? It's, 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 not, it's not winning because you can just move the rook somewhere. I had a brain lag, and for one couple of seconds, uh, I thought that <laughs> yeah, Black yeah. King is an F8, yeah. and I was no, like, no. What? "It's not, it's not winning, it's not winning." Okay, but is it a draw? Well, maybe this actually gives Black some chances. Yeah, I think because so. because Black could perhaps round up the pawn on e7 because uh, now White has an even more passive. Bishop on d8. I'm not sure this rook e7 was the best option actually. Yeah, but he also he is under some uh, time pressure. There's also time pressure. Yeah, yeah. 
I yeah. want sure to be black here. The only one who can win is black, I think. Yeah, I don't know if there is some H5 idea at some point here. Maybe that's how you do it. You can also play E8 and take on F6, but then you have to defend with the rook against rook and bishop. And with little, little time, that's very difficult. So yeah. you, want, you want to avoid that. I would play bishop d4 here, I think. And then after rook h5? Maybe rook e5. Oh, but then I exchange, that's a complete draw, right? Yeah. So if you want to win, you have to... Oh, this is actually nice. Bishop e1, bishop uh, b4, but after king b5, he had to play king b5, like... Uh, Bishop b4 and e8, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's very hard to play. I mean, they're under the pressure and uh, not so easy at all. No, well, king b6 is a slight mistake. <clears throat> Inaccuracy. Inaccuracy, yeah. Because now the pawn is go gone. So now yeah. he can play e8 and take on f6 to go for the... Yeah, most likely he has to go for it. Yeah. It will be a very good uh, experience for him. Like this is priceless. Black priceless can take experience. On e but I can take on E7 now. If you exchange everything, it's lost, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm just the trying. The king goes up to, yeah, and it's lost. So, uh, no, this was a mistake. Also, the rook D7 is a mistake. Uh, a slight, this is a real mistake because, yeah, this is, this is also possible. You know what, Tom? I think actually if he takes on, uh, on e7, I can play king c6 in an intermediate move and then it's a draw. Could it be? Because I'm in time, <clears throat> I'm in time to bring my king to d5 and... <clears throat> but now, now if you take on e7, what, what is your move? Bishop e7, uh, or maybe... This, this looks really bad now for white. I'm not sure about this f5 move. No, maybe not. Because you have to take on e7 at some point. Yeah. Yeah. For instance, probably, It's probably a draw. Uh, uh, but yeah, but, but, having this time pressure... But f4 now, what happens? f4. f4. King d5, f3. Hmm. Takes f2. <laughs> Takes on b4, queen. Uh, maybe then it's a draw. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. You play because you have this. Yeah. Yeah, it should be a draw. Maybe now rook b5. Rook b5. Rook b5 and then. Or rook b3, yeah, rook b3 maybe. No, rook b3 is less precise because now yeah, I can now take, can take, take with yeah. the king. Probably you have to keep uh, ah. bishops. D don't exchange bishops here. Uh huh. Then what about king d5? Ah, what's this? By the way, by the way, I what think now it's. Uh... Now it should be a draw, right? I mean, now even black has some problems because rook h8, rook f8 is a big threat. Well, you have bishop b2 now. Yeah, but why do you have to allow that? That is already playing with the fire. Yeah, this is... Oh, what's happening here? Now you lose the bishop to e8. Now, now you lose the game. Or rook, rook f8 you play. Oh. Yeah, now you, now you just lose the game. Well, I'm happy for Victor, but I'm a bit unhappy for Michaelis because uh, he was defending very well for a long time. Yeah, this. Yeah, is but he had like all all the all the chances in this game, like to also win. Rook D6, uh, Bishop D6. He could have won, right? We we. Or yeah, he had like five five moments to win the game. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess very deserved victory for. For Victor, but it, yeah, it's it's nice that he gets gets a point. I'm I'm really happy for him because he has played so well and he's fought so well, and that he can win a game like this after all those losses is um, yeah remarkable. I would say. True. True. Yeah.
Mm. Ah, is it a draw? King D7, no, no, no. No, King, yeah, King D7, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty. But you I have mean, to these, find... These guys are really resourceful, they find everything. Yeah, they maybe... Miss, rook, they miss rook, everything sometimes too. Rook H8, Rook, uh, rook E8, just to repeat uh, the moves. Yeah, just to... I hope it doesn't take a draw here. <laughs> He might yeah. miss in D7, you know. Yeah, yeah unfortunately. He missed, it. he missed it. That's really good yeah. side, actually. Such an easy yeah. way to look up. Yeah, but it's too much nerves and no time. Look at the wow. time. He has What's only a drama. Seconds. What a drama. Uh, Tom, um, I think maybe we don't need to say to Victor that uh, he could have won this game. No, 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 no. We're not. We, we're not going to say that. Yeah, yeah. Because he I mean, he, he will know that himself. Games. I mean, he's a good player. He, he will know that himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's just. No, let's let's um, let's talk about the game in general. If he if he comes to the to the show. Yeah. So and what happened in the game now? Uh, in the match. Uh, yeah. So. Um, the next round starts in 19 minutes. So in case we have someone a little bit later, uh, right now we just have a time and um, we can real quick go through the game between Arvid and, um, and Maria Kuznetsova. <coughs> uh, okay, so when, yeah, Victor left, uh, left the computer. So when he is back then, uh, uh, hopefully we can see him in in the studio. And uh, right now, just let's see what happens in the in the game between Friedman and Kuznetsova. So it was a very solid, uh, super standard um, London system, not with the Queen B6 as guys played. So Maria has her own approach, and I think allowing E5 was a good sign for Black. What do you think, Tom? Yeah, I think if you allow that, um, there is no no real point in the white system. You actually play black more or less with with, with white. Uh, yeah, so true. You have to play knight e5. So normally you have to play knight e5 and then uh, go for f4 setup, and then you have this kind of a stone wall system. Yeah, uh, yeah playing you have to with play, white. You have to play. Uh, you have to play for the attack, and uh, yeah. That's how but but at the same time, having this uh, stone wall system, it's super hard to, to get rid of this knight on e5, and uh, any exchange on e5 basically is concession for black, and then they're just turn under attack as rook comes to the game as much as bishop. So pretty annoying to play with black, I would say. And uh, we have Victor in our studio. Uh, so, but let's finish first with this game real quick. I just want. Well, don't to... you think we should talk to Victor now? So we. Yeah. Okay. We can we jump. We can go get back to this. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Hey, Victor. Hey. Gratulerar med med partiet. Du spelar bra. Tack. Can you speak English, or will you just talk? Ah, I can speak English. Okay, we can talk English. Good. So, okay. when, hi, Victor. Hi. What, 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 what do you have to say about this game? How was the game? Do you think? I think I played uh, really well. Yes. Uh, I missed the chance in the end. I think. At what point do you think you missed the move? I think I had king is six some move. I don't know when, but you mean in the in the very end or? Yeah, somewhere there. Okay, shall we start from the opening? Uh, I think. Well, first of all, uh, we both of us, uh, me and Tom, we think that this was the best game so far from you, and you're a real hero because you're playing a really good chess, and uh, uh, well, sometimes you're just it's well. A difficult field for everyone and uh, for you as well. So we are cheering for you, even though uh, I'm in Latvian team. I'm cheering for you in the <laughs> pretty much every single game. Um, so in the opening, was there some kind of debate, uh, theoretical, uh, theoretical fights? Uh, yeah, like 
the other two games yesterday, mm -hmm. they played A5, but now we played H5. <clears throat> uh -huh, and I, so... I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's one of the, the lines. It's been popular to play H5. Uh, I think that was before they started playing A5. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, so... I, I don't think H4 is the, the most uh, natural move. I uh, I think just continue developing. But I think something like play. this was... Yeah. Uh... But, but the H4 is not bad. I mean, it's certainly playable. So let's Let's just look at it and see what happens. Yeah, yeah, so you finish your development. So Queen D2, Long Castle also looks very playable. Um, and as we saw later in the game, it was also possible to create some attack. And um, definitely one of the drawbacks of H5 move is weakening the whole king side in case, in case of castle. Yeah, he's never going to castle. And now he castles and... Uh, yeah. And... Oh, yeah. It's like it was like an indicator for you. Like seriously, you're castling. Okay, where's my rook, guys? Guys, where's my rooks? <laughs> and you're like rook g1, g4. Let's go for the world. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm very impressed by knowledge of this uh, positional moves like king b1. That's that's very impressive. Um, so knight b6, uh, very standard move, and g4. Wow, does it work? Like takes, takes, and b4. Can you go b4? There's some kind of g5, maybe. Yeah. What do you or, play after b4? I here? think I lose the pawn. Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you play knight d5 maybe, and or what do you do? Because. It looks a bit dangerous for you after b4, right? Yeah. But he uh, played something else. b4, g5, and uh, takes, takes. Takes. Oh, yeah. Takes, but, takes, uh, takes. But you cannot sacrifice the queen, no. right? But you mean taking on c3. So g5, take, b4, c, g5, and then take on c3 and take back. Is that the idea? But then e4 is falling, right? Yeah. Okay, then I guess I just, let's... I, I just wanted to check if you could sack the queen, but... Thanks. Yeah, but you only have one rook there. It's not mate. Yeah. But, yeah uh, well, but, okay, maybe he missed something here. What did he play? So, yeah, he played knight c4, yeah. and so, after so... takes, takes, Victor is playing g5, so... Yeah. But now Today. it works. Now it works, right? Now it works very, very nicely. Because now we, now he's taking the B three knight instead yeah. of the C three knight. And also, this is good. You play King A one. You you use his pawn as a shield for your king. Yeah, that's nice. Your king is basically saying, "Okay, I don't care. Uh, black pawn, white pawn, all good. Good enough for me. I have, I have in the safety uh, yeah. under these two pawns." Very cool. So takes, takes. Wow. And uh, to be honest, that's a little bit surprising. Queen e you can't go queen e5 because the queen is trapped after bishop b6. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's a beauty. That's queen right. Queen a5 and bishop b6. Impressive. Very impressive. OK, queen e8. And now you're starting to attack. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's how Bishop uh, came to h4. Yeah. That was the story behind that. Maybe, maybe uh, Nikita, you should show after, if black takes on, on d5 instead. Uh, because uh -huh. then, then white takes the, the, on f6. The bishop hangs on f6, doesn't Yeah, it? then you take on f6. That's the point. That's, that's the problem for black here, because you would like to take the knight, but you cannot. Yeah, and that's why you have to take this yeah. uh, h-pawn. Which maybe is actually not so good for black because you're opening even h file. Um, yeah, very hard to say. I'm pretty sure white is doing very good here, and uh, uh, I guess bishop h6 was another option how to continue the attack. It looks so 
so unpleasant for black to be honest so basically you were doing uh, pretty uh, pretty fine during the whole game it, no, it looks six. like it's almost mate here i mean it's it looks yeah like just the only move um, yeah, queen d6. Can you do something else? There is uh, some other move instead of queen d6. Can you play some like something like um, I don't know. I thought about queen h2, but takes on d5. It d5. Takes on d5. Um, yeah, that's true. And you can't take with the pawn because the bishop hangs. And yeah. Well, you could yeah. do that and take the h4 bishop, but. Yeah, it's not so clear. I agree with you. Yeah, mm. queen d6. Uh, the queen is strong on d6 too, and, and the bishop is still bad on h4. So yeah, let's see what happened. Mm. We we came in and looked around here somewhere. Uh, yeah, I think so. And we were we were quite impressed with your position, and we we felt that um, this have to be at least an advantage for white. Did you feel that too, Victor? That this was good for you? Yeah, I felt like. I should have a compensation for the pawn. Yeah, because the A2 pawn, A pawn is, I mean, it's... it's and the A6 pawn. No, you have three pawns and he has four pawns, right? Yeah, but so, the A6 pawn is also weak. The, the, yeah, also. also. Yeah, true. But I think the main strength in your position is the fact that your pieces are all very good and he has he has this bishop on H4. This is a real big weakness he has. And uh, so that's the main problem for him. Yeah, you played this and it was just a repetition, yeah? Yeah. You have, just you have taken a draw here? If No, you, you, you played something else, right, in this position, did you? Uh, no, he... He, he, played, he something. played something else. Yeah, he, he uh, avoided it. Would you have gone for a repetition if you, he had done that? I don't know. Nah. I, might yeah, have I wouldn't be surprised. I, I wouldn't be surprised if you did that. I mean... I might have thought before I did that, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see what happened. Yeah, the more, I, the more I look at this position, the more I understand that it's just so bad. Like, queen f7, bishop h6, just go back, because this is pretty much the only move. Um, wow. And maybe instead of going back, you can even somehow improve your position, like play c4. But, but it's not bad. I mean, what you played with c4, and, and that looks very, yeah, very yeah, solid. Yeah. With little time, it's... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I really like the c4 pawn formation because you stabilized your piece and uh, it looks just so incredibly difficult for black to do something here. So really good good pressure and takes, takes. I don't know, maybe I should have took with the e pawn. Maybe. Yeah, I also considered this one is one of the ideas, but I guess... Because I get two pass pawns. Yeah. Yeah, true, true. And um, this pawn is, would be supported by the rook, and the second would be supported by the bishop after c5. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, yeah makes, makes some sense. But I think even this one is interesting, because after a couple of moves, we thought that uh, maybe it's worth to not to exchange the queens, because his king should be should be weaker. Yeah. Uh, but you were, we have to say that you were under the uh, time pressure as well. Yeah. Right here, you had like only one and a half minutes against 10 minutes, which is, uh, or something similar. Yeah, I felt that here, Black's chances to make a draw increased with this uh, exchange of queens. I agree. And here we were, uh, yeah, bishop c7 was very logical. So uh, Tom explained to me that you want to uh, prevent rook b7 and uh, with this rook b2 ID. And uh, this, this was very understandably. Uh, so very logical so far. Yeah, now he definitely. Uh, increased his chances just because of his pieces are better consolidated compared to the five moves ago. And here was a big tactical shot. Also, thank you to my co-commentator. Uh, Bishop d6, a very impressive one. I was like, what? Seriously? Bishop d6? What is, what is this one? So... 
Did you see that move, Victor? No, I didn't. Yeah. And the very last uh, stage of the game after Rook D3 takes, takes, and uh, Rook D5. Yeah, we can do it again. Yeah, even here, uh, that was possible. A big beauty. So here, uh, Black, again, were in a big trouble, I guess. And uh, somehow, he's very close to losing the game. I maybe should have gone uh, Rook F1. Yeah, yeah, by the way. To put that Rook F6 pawn after, maybe. But maybe Rook H5 or something here. Get, round, get, the, get your Rook. I think King B5, King C6 also would be an interesting try. Yeah, also, yeah. Yeah, I also um, thought that, but I never actually got to do that. I think Rook E7, after Rook E7, Black should not have any problems. Uh, yeah. But, but this could be a winning position for you. I think Nikita's suggestion here of playing King B5 is, and King C6 looks really strong. Yeah, just bring this. Uh, yeah, just bring bring everything to the, <laughs> to the game. Yeah. The action. Yeah, and uh, it looked uh, interesting, but it's super hard to um, make progress with this pawn, right? But you got, uh, you, you still managed to, to get, this was, a, we were a bit afraid that maybe suddenly he would get a better play here. What did you think about that, Victor? I thought my, I don't know, I, this looks like a drawn position to me. It is probably drawn because you can always play e8 and then take on f6, but then you have to defend with a rook against rook and bishop with little time. That's not so nice in a rapid game. I actually think I need to go. Okay. Anyway, Victor, very nice play by you and congratulations on making this draw. And actually, I think you could have won it at several occasions and you will find that yourself when you analyze it. But it was a good game and very interesting. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much, Victor. That was very impressive and uh, wish you good luck in the last two rounds. So the next round starts very soon. So um, yeah, have some time, a couple of minutes to rest and um, good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Yeah. What a nice guy, I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, yeah. he's eight years old and he speaks perfect English. I mean, this is... <laughs> yeah, first of all, he speaks perfect English and he's also very active. Uh, I've seen him many, many times in uh, some Zoom conferences and uh, uh, he's very active trying to, to learn the best. And uh, yeah, just... Yeah, I don't know if you saw his presentation where he listed his interests. He had like five or six big interests. <laughs> wow, that's... Uh, including math and other things. Yeah, really. Wow, impressive. Yeah. Only eight years old. Yeah. Something, something to think about even for us. Yeah, we need to right. develop more interests. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. And uh, what was your last interest? My last interest? Big one. Yeah, <laughs> something that you understood that, okay, actually, that is something, something for me. Um, well, I actually have many interests besides chess. So I, I don't feel that I'm completely barren in this uh, area, but I could, when I was younger, I, I did quite a lot of sports, you know, I, I played tennis and things like that. And I haven't done oh, yes. so much of that. I think I would like to do that again, but I haven't done it. So that, that, that would be something to, to sort of uh, get back to. I haven't, uh, I haven't been so active. That's the uh, truth. What about you? Oh. Uh, okay. Since, January this year, I started running. Mm -hmm. uh, so good. one of my best friends, he he's doing it already for, for a while. And uh, for a very long time, he uh, said to me some, uh, some stories about his runs. He even went to some other cities for mar marathons and stuff like that. And I was like, no, 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 no. That's not for me. Just running? Running? What do you mean? Just run with no reason somewhere? <laughs> Straight, straight. You want to be, you want to run from something or run to something? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So what was the reason? But uh, somehow 
uh, especially because of Corona and uh, everything is closed, the gyms are closed, everything. And uh, um, always, uh, even from the very early uh, childhood, I had this love uh, to all kinds of sports, including mm -hmm. tennis and uh, pretty much everything. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I decided to, to start running and... Uh, uh, I crossed uh, 50 kilometers in, in January. So, oh. um, yeah. Good. But so yeah, you're, going, you're going for the New York Marathon? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure no. <laughs> okay. But yeah. Our so next we have a, a, a girl, girl uh, meeting here between Maria and Alva. Yeah, yeah. And it looks um, like we have a. A close Sicilian again. Do you remember how they played yesterday? You mean the the, uh, the Sicilian, the close? Yeah, I remember. No, no, no. The game between uh, Maria. Uh -huh. and, uh, between the two. Yeah. Uh, that was in round three, right? Round, round three. This is round three. So, so I think uh, Alva won that game. Yeah, exactly. She was the only one uh, who was able to um, defeat Maria. Yeah, and uh, uh, I hope we are going to see bathtub again. <laughs> Hopefully, after a four or five. Yeah, yeah, we're going for it. That's my my absolutely best formation. Um, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What we can say about this position? Um, well, we can say that we, I think we had it. I think we had, well, I don't know. I'm not sure it was exactly this position with well, it basically this position. I don't remember if White played F4 before Queen D2, but but we basically this uh, position yesterday. And that was a game that ended in a draw finally. No, she lost it, right? That was Alva's only loss. Uh, yeah, I think. It, it was this rook ending where she refused to draw. <laughs> you remember? Yeah, yeah, against uh, Tomachovs. Yes, against Tomachovs. Yeah, true, so, true. So that was her only uh, only loss, and, and it, the loss was really self inflicted because she should have taken the draw. But uh, and, let's go to the next game, I think, because this. Yeah, we can come back the, very, the very last thing uh, I wanted to say about this position that uh, both sides have made nine moves, and mm -hmm. this is. Uh, the perfect position uh, in 2020-2021 because uh, nine moves and no uh, physical contact, social distancing <laughs> are on a very decent level. So yeah. <laughs> no risk for any contagion between the pieces. Yeah, yeah. you're right. So well, she plays for a different idea here. She actually played, uh, plays bishop h6. So that's a different idea than yesterday. Yesterday she played with f4 and this big clash in the center and now she goes for the exchange so let's move on and yeah. i see something really interesting boom oh. we have this is the dragon right uh yeah. i think victor is very very motivated <laughs> right now so he is wow what is this and just okay. look look at their time can you go for some uh, some attack here? I mean, this looks very dangerous for for White, doesn't it? Yeah, to be honest. Um, At some point, even Rook takes B two could come. Maybe I don't know. But true. At the true. right moment, in the right situation. Uh, he plays E four. I mean, he yeah E four is it, because the threat was to take on on G six, right? And then it will be mate. But now there is no, not, no risk because you take with the bishop. That's the point. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, I got it. But uh, yeah, and g4 also is. Yeah, g4 important. is interesting. It takes, 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 oh. and your, your king is open, too open. So there, yeah. there should be a checkmate delivery very soon. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You, you can also, if you want to play after, uh, after g4 takes, takes, you can play queen c3. I think that wins immediately. Yeah, so I guess, and by the way, after f takes e4, I thought about queen c3 intermediate move. So the point is, you have to play b3, right? Yeah. Uh, or, okay, queen c1, but not sure how, how good is this. So including this one, or let's say now queen c3, the point is you have to play b3. 
And um, why maybe now have... you can play Bishop Bishop uh, C4 to B3. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I I, I wanted to ev avoid uh, this um, regrouping for yeah, uh, White's yeah. Bishop. Maybe now you can go for some. I don't know what Black should play. Uh, maybe you can. Uh. Maybe you can play Queen B4 and play A5 or. Maybe. Yeah, to be to be honest, I would I would play this position with black. Yes, or maybe Definitely. after bishop c4 you can play queen e5, maybe something like that, like that, and then you play a5. Queen e5, yeah. Then I have to go bishop b3, but after a5, I guess there is rook d5. It's true. So maybe, very maybe, sharp. Maybe it's not. Maybe queen b4 is better than. In this situation, or maybe I don't know what to do. It's it's not hundred percent clear. Um, I would consider Queen B four as the main one, but okay, he goes for Queen C three. Maybe maybe he wants to play Queen G seven. Maybe he wants to go for the. It looks like. Yeah. But then I think White has no big problems. Shouldn't be too too difficult to play. Then he should survive at least. Well, uh, he should survive, although. I think still black is doing pretty fine here because he has yeah. a pair okay of pawns. Yeah, it's true. And the real problem for white is that actually he has a bunch of pawns on the uh, queen side, but uh, they're not advanced and uh, I see no perspective in the near future. Uh, something, something similar happened in my game against Benjamin Bok uh, in uh, Olympiads five years ago in Azerbaijan. Mm -hmm. I played with black and uh, had the same, exactly the same pawn formation uh, without yes. <clears throat> without bishops and uh, obviously the mate threat immediately. But uh, I just outplayed him on the on the king side and he had no choice to um, to make any progress on the queen side. So, um, uh -huh. so white played uh, the solid move queen f4, keeping the attack. I yeah, I like I like queen f4 and uh, also g4 idea is somewhere in the air. Yeah. I think a couple of moves ago right here, Victor uh, yeah. just lost uh, this um, feel, feeling of the moment, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, after, yeah, after f takes e4, he has to think a little and play queen c3. That's very important to prevent... Uh, uh, this regrouping but uh, again it is very difficult even for um, for masters and grandmasters so uh, this is not something obvious and uh, definitely not uh, something is, is queen c3 queen c3 wins immediately right after b3 you take on e4 and then you play e3 and then you play e2 you just move push the point yeah maybe Maybe, but uh, well, it doesn't matter. But, it, it's but almost this is not not obvious at any case. No. Okay, a five is logical, right? And by the way, yeah, Victor, uh, he has an idea. He just wants to push. Yeah. A four and just deliver the checkmate and B two. <laughs> just a little checkmate. Nothing special. So True. do you have to play a four here? Um, or do you play g4? But then a4. I, yeah, but then you can take on f5. Maybe g4. The, the thing is, after g4, I think bishop e6 exists. It does. So queen e4 and maybe rook b4 and then a4. Can I do something like this? Yeah. I don't know. Well, it's not clear. I think you can play some move like queen e1, you know, keeping the rook attacked. Uh, but then maybe mm -hmm. you can push, the, put the other rook. I, it's unclear, but uh, this is very sharp now. This is yeah, this is very sharp. This and by the way, very, very sharp. I, but Victor, I mean, he's still uh, he's still fighting for the attack. I think that's uh, the right way to play, not go into some. Um, you know what? Tom? We can move on to the next game. Yeah, let's and, do. Uh, yeah. And um, this game actually already finished, and uh, it's a big drama. Okay. It's a, it's a big drama in terms of um, um, playing in the internet. So sooner or later, it should have been 
Uh, we already saw that the Vingris played knight b7 in Ooh, the first what round. What happened today. here? Um, queen d4. Oh, he played queen d4. No, hold on. Queen d4, bishop f6, and uh, the game finished. So, uh, does well, anyone know what, what happened in it this game? It must have been a disconnect or whatever. I don't know what could it be. Or... Yeah. Yeah, was it because of disconnect? Wow. I mean, this, this, he cannot have resigned. Well, he's a rook down. <laughs> he's a rook down. Uh, oh, no he's a rook down. Hold yeah, on, he's hold a rook on. down. <laughs> yeah, I thought it's some kind of disconnect or... Uh... Uh, but Yeah, but he's a rook down, so that explains it, right? Okay, hold on. That was uh, better. We know already, everyone knows pretty much uh, uh, whole Sweden and Latvia knows that uh, this is... Arvid playing uh, Petrov defense. G4. Okay, so far everything is okay. And what happened here? Takes. Oh, 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 oh okay. That yeah. was a big blunder. Yeah. That was a big blunder. And yeah, yeah that's how it finished. Okay, so it makes, so no, it it's, makes sense. It's clear. Woo. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was that was that was horrible. That that was a little bit like uh, Victor, how he lost um, in this time on of uh, with White. Yeah, too. true. So, same true. Thing. This Absolutely. happens sometimes. It's it's uh, it can happen to anyone actually. So yeah, you make a bad move and then suddenly it spirals away everything. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. So okay. Um, so yeah, let's, the let's very last on. the very last game also very sharp. Uh, oh. Oh, this I think this looks very good for white. Yeah, indeed. Uh, actually, this, I think this white is, is a sort of perfect, perfect game for for white somehow. I don't know. It, uh, not mates, but uh, well, I don't know. I think I, I think uh, I'm going to have a heart attack after this game. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so so bad to look at this. Well, but Ooh. it's not finished. I don't see the mate. I mean, if it was mate, it would be mate. But it's I, I can see the mate, but I can feel the mate, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Just, I can it's also very feel painful. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I very know. painful. Oh, oh, Jesus! No, 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 no. Oh, it no, is but, very painful physically. But yeah, <laughs> but I mean, there are lots of threats, of course. Uh, yeah, I don't know what happened here, but but uh, should we go back a few moves just to see how this developed? It looks okay. some, some sort of Sicilian here. No, yeah, so yeah, it's it, just dragon line. The dragon, yeah. I guess a normal dragon because I'm not a dragon lover and uh, uh, hand plate, and I guess all this is yeah. theory. I think what Black is doing here is he plays much too slow. With rook e8 and a6, this is not the way to go in my uh, book. Not in the spirit of, of true no, it's Sicilian, not in the spirit right? Because black, white has such an easy attack. And I think that's what we see in this game. White has a, a pre-planned attack that is very forceful. And it's, it's, you know, like Fisher said, you know, I just play h4, h5, and then I win. And, and that's what's happening in this game. Yeah, true. And uh, I think, again, if you see opposite uh, color, opposite um, castling, yeah. opposite side castling on the board, then um, like this is the clear indicator of uh, doing something quickly. This is a very dynamical position. Yeah, you have to act. Every move is very valuable. You, you, you don't True. have so many moves. <laughs> True, so you have to be quick and uh, A6 is definitely not not something you you have to do yeah, already rook e8 is, is i i understand the idea you want to prevent uh, the exchange of bishops and play bishop h8 but it's just too slow i think but let's see what happens let's see how this goes yeah so knight a5 king b1 yeah it's king okay. b1 is solid but it it looks like yeah black is just uh doesn't have uh, any any kind of counterplay normally sh he should have no yeah 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 because this is just a free free attack yeah it's a free that's attack a, that's a problem and uh, 
I have I want to stop here because normally when black takes on c4 with a pawn, everything collapses. The whole attack finishes right yeah. here. You close, so, close everything. Yeah, you close this important uh, c file and um, it's even harder to organize something on B file against the king because you have to bring your rook, you have to bring your queen, and um, and it's uh, and at in, least in the, two in the end, in, in the very end, white plays B three, and you have to regroup everything to get anything. Yeah, so it's it's very difficult to get an attack. Yeah, so takes on G six. You see, we need two moves to create at least something. At least yeah. something, uh, but takes takes bishop h6. So white already already on fire. They're doing yeah queen h2 with immediate threat of playing bishop f8. The yeah. very, very well known trick uh, from the old times. And, and so. now we see see that this rook e8 bishop h8 thing. It didn't work. It didn't help. Uh... Boom. Oof. Just boom. Yeah, you have to take with a bishop takes and uh, yeah, so finally he got some time to, to do something, but you see these two tempos was just not enough. You have no time and now b6 uh, square is covered. So And again, uh, even if you got the queen there, it would be b3 and it would be nothing. So it's it's not a good way to attack. I agree with you. Yeah. And, and then now, now the question is, is there a move? Yeah, c3 he played now. Yeah, so Mitchell is uh, desperately... He, he tries, tries, he tries. To... Yeah, it's good. Try to confuse your opponent, at least. Yeah, that's that's what you have to do in such cases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, But yeah. I think White um, can just take it. Clearly, he's, he's on tilt. And he could... He, yeah, he could also have played the b3. I don't know taking on f6. Is that right? Is there a win here somewhere? I would take here. Oh, but there is queen h8 threat now. Oh, Lord. Queen h8. Oh, actually, what can you this? take? Now you win. No way. No way. Because Oh, but, but you were winning at any case. You were winning at any case because if you go here, then uh, you throw a check and then yeah. you play queen b8. Yeah. Oh, no way. What a drama. What a drama. I have said this, this only shows game. that you, you, you cannot only think about your own plans. You have to think about what your opponent is doing. True. And, true. and if you don't do that, but is it really over? Let's look at it. King a1. Yeah. I think take it's on over. a2, only move. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the thing is, it's the only move because otherwise Queen H8 is just finishing. Yeah, the game. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you, let's see what happens. Rook takes A2, King takes Queen A5, King B3 only move, right? Yeah. Oh, what actually, maybe, maybe maybe it's, it's not mate. over. Is it mate? I'm not sure it's mate. Takes Rook takes. B3. Queen A5, King B3, Rook B8, King C4. Maybe. It's yeah. Mate. Yeah, this is not a mate. It's not. It's not. It's maybe. It's maybe white is winning still. <laughs> yeah, still. Maybe. It looks like white is winning. Yeah, maybe. Oh, what a game! All these games are fantastic. I mean, <laughs> what a game! Okay, he goes for it. Obviously. Yeah, we have only only chance. I would say because uh, I mean. It's... Okay, I'm not even sure that this is a chance because. Um... Again, white has absolutely only moves. Yeah, probably it doesn't work because of the king b3 and the king escapes. Very unusual, but I, black has so few pieces. That's the problem, yeah. So I, I want to draw. <gasps> what? what? What's this? Oh, this is, that's too bad. I mean, he has... No way. Five minutes and he goes into a mate. Uh, I have third, <laughs> third heart attack, <laughs> please. Well, that's too bad. Oh, well, oh, I, no, no, I no. have to criticize that. To play yeah, true. almost, almost pre-move King B1 and be mated in two moves. That's when you can play King B3 and win the game. Yeah, I, w I wanted to draw this uh, 
root of the king, king b1, king c1, after making long castle, king b1, and then king a2, king b3. Uh, the escape moonwalk would be like this, and finally he reaches uh, his hometown. Yeah, once, home once, the, once the king gets to c4, you, you cannot catch it anymore because the knight is helping in the defense of the king, actually, on d5. Actually, is it some kind of... Um, um, some kind of a heart, you know, today, uh, today's um, uh, 14th of <laughs> February. Yeah, the Valentine's Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, no, no love, yeah, no love today. I think it, the heart stands for heart attack. <laughs> oh, yeah, we see, we see messages in the chat, in our Twitch chat, awful, oh my God, again. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Let's not, move to another game. Let's not dwell yeah. on this one. But that's a pity because he played such a good game and then he, he just throws it away. So yeah, but he will learn. He will learn. Okay, let's go. Yeah. So this was the moment when uh, we we went to the next game. So what actually happened in the girls' competition? So Bishop H6, D5. Okay, no, no bathtub, uh, normal, normal setup. This takes takes, and again d4. So I guess white is doing fine here. No, I would play yeah, with white yeah, this, this formation. Looks, yeah, this looks this looks quite nice actually. Takes takes, and uh, oh, bishop e6. I'm not a big fan of uh, of isolated isolated pawn position. Or hanging pawns, but I, I played from time to time. But bishop e6 is uh, some, somewhat a big pawn. No, it's, it's quite interesting that Alva she has all these strategies. I mean, she played the yeah the, the f4 attack uh, yesterday, and she got a very good position. And now she's she switches to a different plan, and she avoids preparation. I mean, that's that's kind of savvy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, true. And uh, also, I really like her. her strategical view of just bringing uh, peace to the game, develop them, and in the very right moment, she strikes. In the very right moment. Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. And this now... Is, I, this is, of course, not over yet, but the, White has a slight uh, and rather pleasant advantage, I would say. Yeah. So oh, what is this? Knight e4, nice. Knight e4 followed by knight g5. Ooh. Oh, saucy. That's, that's threatening too much. So you have to play knight d8. Yeah, I only move. So everything is already on the board. Rook e6, rook a c8, down pawn, uh, rook e1, knight f5, pretty much the only move, um, and c3. Very solid. So Maria has to sacrifice another pawn in order to stay alive in this game and then try to counterattack it. But again, I think after D5, something like D5, it should be pretty much a matter of time in this, in this competition. Yeah. Huh. Maybe you could even go for G4 here. G4, mm, yeah. Yeah, I think G4 finishes pretty much immediately. Just to get the rook on E7. And sure. Well, that can take on D4, but it you can move the queen away and then you just collect. But uh, you don't have to do that. You have two pawns, uh, so there are many moves. Yeah, queen G5 is also good enough. Yeah, this is also good. Also good. Threatening rook E7. Mm. So shall we go, go to the next game? Yeah, we have only one game left. Oh. And uh, it looks like Victor is about... We have to go back. Strike! We have to go yeah, back. let's go. Let's go back. So Victor, he's really got things going now. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. So A5 we saw. That was the last move. And then G4. That, that was, was, I was suggesting. Yeah, this is your... Uh, following your analysis, yeah. And, and Queen E1. Queen E1, that's yeah. That's the move. Yeah. So but Black, Black has a good game here, I think. Yeah. Yeah. 
Why Very is he being pressured on the on the? Ooh. Oh, he he just blundered this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's pressured. I mean, it's not easy to play when you. Yeah, uh, true, true. But but this so was, impressive, but, very impressive um, game by by Victor today. Yeah. Yeah, and then this he gets all the tactics right in this game, and uh, all the tactics, everything's yeah. precise. Takes takes rookie okay. eight, creating a deadly threat of. Rook. Oh wow! Yeah, he's a bit lucky that he can play this move, but it's still lost. But uh, yeah. Yeah, um, maybe, maybe Rook A8 was. Oh, but after Rook A8, I guess Queen E5, and you're yeah, not solving yeah, the problem. Probably good. Yeah. Wow. So. Yeah, this. This should be winning. Although. You have, to yeah, watch, this... you have to watch out now because after bishop d5, it's it's bishop b7 suddenly. <laughs> yeah, I think that bishop uh, rook a7 would be the cleanest way of, of doing that, but let's see. So, oh, that's yeah, you can do that. You, the king is just not to allow this this counterplay of uh, bringing five pawns to, to the queen side, right? No, but he has already not played it the best way, I think. Oh, uh, yeah. Wow, this is so dramatic. I mean... <sighs> no, I'm not sure he's going to win this because uh, he, he's, uh, his technique here is, is maybe not up to it. I'm not sure because the, the, the pawns are coming. Maybe. Yes, yeah, it's, it's actually not so easy even to deal with this... Um, b5 b6 and uh, this the big pawn or the sniper controlling the h1 square and he also you controls have to the king to b8, right but then you have to sacrifice and then you don't win if you sacrifice on a7 then you just lose yeah, yeah so I, maybe now it's already lost right true true yeah. it's a pity he had such a good game but yeah you have to play well all the way yeah, yeah. that's that's the true that's how chess is sometimes very unpleasant, especially for the kids. Yeah, it's a tough game. Painful, painful. Maybe, can he make a draw here? Yeah, I don't think so. No, I don't think so either. But this is a sport. This is a sport. Yeah. That's how it is. Yeah, it's tough. You have to land your punches where well, he played very well should we go back just and see what, what could he have done instead of uh, getting into this uh, thing here sure so i believe so far it was everything nice so our terms uh, he understands that he's um, in the deep trouble so he has to to do something to create something and i guess uh, well this is very um, this is very natural however rookie five also would be a very simple try just to prevent tactics and um, basically before doing something by yourself you have to prevent your opponent's ideas that's the general general rule of um, um, converting advantage to the full point so safety first and then secure full point and then you yeah. have to do the something. problem I think is with black here you think it's an easy win right because you you think yeah I can always stop the pawns with the, with my rook and I have my but True. the problem is that the bishop on d5 it, it not only stops the h pawn it also helps so suddenly the bishop becomes the strongest piece yeah true uh, maybe we should play rook e5 here yeah rook e5 would be the then most precise a6 and then or actually, I'm not so sure. Rook e5, h, uh, a6 goes there, bishop c4, and then some kind of b4. Maybe still it, it's good enough, but uh, you have to calculate. But I think rook, rook e5, a6, rook a5, and then you rush the h pawn. I think that works, right? Yeah, that, that should be working. That should be. I'm pretty sure. It looks, let's say, but, a yeah, but, but even seven. this one, even this one. So, 
maybe rook d7 instead. Now then this bishop a4. Now but with the king on f8, you should play maybe rook d7. What happens after that? Rook a7 is also good enough. Rook, rook a7, a7, bishop c4, h4, b4, or yeah, actually maybe it's not so clear anymore. <sighs> it should be winning. It should be winning, but yeah. But you have to show some technique and uh, some yeah. confidence you have to calculate. as well. True. And we have another question, uh, not question, but <laughs> uh, another sentence in the chat. My heart is not strong enough. I can't watch this. This was uh, from one of our, one of the, basically the main coaches of the Latvian team, Sergei yeah. Klimakov. So yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, stay strong. Well, we, now, <laughs> now we see why the Latvian get, the team is winning. I mean, we had, Two such good positions for for us and lost both. Uh, and this is uh, this is how it works. Yeah, true. And uh, I have to admit that uh, um, the fight is very close. Fight is very close, but uh, uh, somewhere we are a little bit more lucky. Somewhere uh, like no, Victor, I think, I, I, you cannot say it's. I think it's maybe a little bit more experienced. A little, yeah, a little bit more experience. That's a little bit precise. more. A little bit more. Um, yeah. Lots of little bit more. Yeah. Maybe a little bit more technique, you know. Uh, yeah, true. So, but anyway. But, I, but I'm very impressed by um, uh, by this pair. So Alva outplayed Maria both times and uh, in a very nice, nice way. So yeah, she, is it actually, is it the right moment uh, for an interview with Alva? Sure, if she wants to. It, it would be really nice to see her because uh, she, I think, deserved, deserved, very well deserved interview. Um, yes, she's been playing very well all the time and yeah and just yes, crushed yes, Maria no, no 20, 27 no, moves yes. yeah and uh, what do we have in the end in the end uh, it's 2-2 two, two in this round yeah is that true yeah because in this game Accidentally, we managed to yeah, Metalist yeah. managed to win, but yeah, I have to say that uh, Metalist is in uh, on tilt today, so he's he's playing much worse compared to the yesterday, and uh, I don't know what's the reason. Maybe some pressure, maybe something else, maybe uh, yeah, it happens. Doesn't sleep enough, but yeah, it's yeah. it was true too. Yeah, this was I forgot about this. Yeah, it's it's two two. Yeah. Yeah, it's two. But it could yeah, it two. could have been four zero for us uh, if you look at the positions at one point. Yeah. But, but that's yeah. how it works, and then uh, yeah, you take your chances or you don't take them. That's how it works. Yeah, as in the football. Yeah. So, if you're not if you're not uh, striking, then yeah, no goal. <laughs> no goal. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Pa -pa 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 -pa. So I don't know if we have uh, any interviewee to come to be interviewed by us or... Um, yeah, so right now we have no answer from Alva. Uh, very hopefully, uh, hopefully um, we will have it in the very near future. So maybe Artsoms could join. Uh, so tell, tell us about his game against Victor and... Um, share his emotions about this sure. game sure. that would be an interesting um interesting interview i don't know if uh, he's yeah we can see that uh, he's back right now i'm not sure if he speaks english so i have to ask uh, if not then i'll be a translator That would be very nice. Yeah. So what is the result right now? 
I, I get lost. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't kept score. Was it? Was I know it, that I know that the Latvian team is leading, but I don't know with how much. Okay. Uh -huh, so okay. So. Uh huh. Salut, Tama. Здравствуйте. Так мы на русском. Да. Хорошо. Okay, so we will speak Russian, and uh, I will uh, I will translate the most okay. important things. Yeah. Um, так, ну, во-первых, поздравляем с победой. Расскажешь Спасибо. про партию свою? Ну, в общем, я играл очень плохо <laughs> на протяжении всей партии. Uh, так, тебе сейчас сколько лет? Мне 11. Тебе 11. Uh, ты играл с парнем, которому всего 8 лет. <laughs> Виктору 8 лет. Uh, он только что чуть не вынес uh, uh, Вингриса. Вот, и ты мог стать второй жертвой. Ну, не стал. Ну, не стал. Давай я быстренько переведу. Uh, so, yeah, Artem also said that uh, he's, uh, he were not playing this, this game very, very well. And uh, I just uh, said that um, uh, Victor just were in our studio and uh, he was so far away from beating uh, Vingris and... Uh, that uh, uh, Artemis could be the second one uh, he, he also was very afraid of. And um, uh, yeah, but he says that, okay, but I managed, managed to find a way how to survive in this game and they won't win. Okay, so what was in the party? Dracon Panarium. You know everything. You know everything. I know everything. До какого момента ты знал, ориентировался, понимал, что надо Ну, доходы Е5, поскольку Е5 я не видел вообще никогда. Ага. То есть вот это, вот это все было. Да, это теория. Вот это все теория, да? Сколько у нас ходов, Тёма? 13 ходов, это все понятно, все вот теория, это было. Да? да. Да, и это тоже теория? Да. И это теория. И это вот уже... только... Да, вот здесь уже... Это да. не теория, Да, да. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, Mr. Uh, so until this moment, everything was uh, was Artyom was in the book. So uh, okay. they were so under everything was under control. And he says that e5, he hadn't seen such move. Uh, so yeah, maybe I don't know who who's helping Victor to prepare for the match, but maybe it was all prepared uh, in terms of time because. Uh, They were uh, rushing. Мы во время просмотра вашей партии анализировали, тоже следили, и мы были очень удивлены, когда подключились, и видим, что у тебя там 15 с чем-то минут, у твоего соперника тоже там в районе 15 минут, то есть вы просто все ходы отбомбили только так. Какие эмоции у тебя были после Е5? Я подумал, что я уже выиграл. Ты потому что уже выиграл. Ага. Ну, там и оценка была, по-моему, плюс два. Где-то так. Плюс полтора. Плюс бомбу. А, то есть, а что после H5? H5 словно F5. Угу. Не знаю, может быть, оценка и плюс два, но по ощущениям, особенно после хода слон D3, казалось, что можно внезапно проиграть. Нет? А, нельзя по-другому играть. Um, Там есть очень неприятный вариант со Солнце 2 и Ладья бьет Б2. Солнце 2, Ладья Б2, да. Хорошо, а как было в партии? То есть компьютер говорит, что тут выиграно. Но по-человечески нам казалось, что тут очень сильно э, пойти в ферзь С3. Ну да, Б3. Тебе, тебе надо пойти в Б3, и тогда Е4. То есть получается... Ну, типа, там бы пришло в Солнце 4 ставить. да. Ну, подожди, ты не можешь поставить слона на c4, то есть у нас включение ходов b3... Да, уже не могу, поэтому проблем возникло. Да, и нам казалось, что тут совсем непонятно получается, то есть... И более того, это как раз-таки Том предложил второй комментатор, что черные могут пойти в c3, b3, сейчас твой ход, ты ходишь, например, да, слон Е2, например. И черный ходит Е2. Э, Е3. Ну, слон Д3 тогда мне пришлось бы ходить. И тогда, и тогда Е2. Ну да, было бы неприятно. 
то есть и какой-то такой пресс вообще непонятно. Может быть, там э, у белых тоже есть свои угрозы, <coughs> вот, но, в общем, непонятно, очень непонятно, такая mm -hmm. супер мега замес. Эм... Но после того, как тебе удалось перегруппироваться, уже вроде как полегче стало. Ну да. То есть ферзь 3 тут единственные ходы. Ты не захотел меняться? Ну да. И зачем меняться, правильно? Ну да, я же такую. Я говорю, что ты не хочешь поменять квинс, и реакция была, что я, конечно, я атакую, так что что ты Oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe it was better to exchange. I don't know. Uh, you mean here for white? Yeah, but it's not lost for, for white. But yeah. after bishop queen f4 and a5, it's it's very difficult position. So yeah, well, it doesn't matter. Let's see. Let's see what happened. А ты оценивал свои шансы, Тём, после ферзи в четыре? Тебе казалось, что ты что что происходило в твоей голове? Ты уже практически побеждал или или наоборот? Ну, я уже думал, что я где-то уже близко. Ты уже то есть ты был так оптимистично настроен в целом. Да. Mm, прикольно. Um, а поменялось ли ощущение, поменялись ли ощущения после нескольких ходов? То есть да. форсировано все получилось. То есть и мы когда анализировали, я как раз таки предложил вот этот вариант за черных, что черные могут начать двигать пешку. Ну вот все эти ходы, которые в итоге случили в партии, ферзь Е4, Том предложил ферзь Е1, в итоге это все было. Слон же 4. То есть, и по ощущениям, твой соперник сделал все самые сильнейшие ходы. Mm -hmm. uh, Все-таки ощущение немножко подвело. И тут uh, совсем все подвело. Mm -hmm. uh, что, о чем ты думал uh, тут? Были какие-то... Уже желание сдаться или Нет. думал, как бы, как бы подкрутить? Я вот Е4 не увидел. Ага. So, Тёма means um, uh, missed the rookie four right here. Yeah, yeah. It's easy to miss, right? Yeah. So, очень, очень легко пропустить этот ход, неочевидный такой. И... И сразу все падает. То есть не только качество проигрываешь, но и ладья и 8, и по первой горизонтали. Не, ну тут тактика меня спасла. Да, тактика спасла. А как ты думал, тут еще есть шансы или... Ну, шансы всегда есть. Шансы всегда есть. Правильно, правильно. Молодцом. Главное, мать не зевнуть по первой. Ну, think, в общем, ты рассматривал ход ладей 5, Тем? Mm -hmm. У меня уже было достаточно мало времени, mm -hmm. поэтому... Я просто тащу пешки. Правильно. So, uh, uh, Тёма says that um, he doesn't have uh, had too much time in this moment, no. so he just tried to run with the pawns and... Uh, yeah, and... I understand. I understand. But yeah, sometimes yeah. you're afraid of certain moves and you're very happy when your opponent don't play them. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, ну и в итоге, собственно, и получилось протащить их. Ну да. То есть тут уже все-таки надо было как-то, наверное, черным ладей 5 сыграть или побыстрее попытаться привязаться к этой пешке. Внезапно получилось, что все, все пешки летят вверх и уже их не остановить. Что происходит после король Б8? У меня все было идти Б5, С5 пойти. 
Б5, С5. Но ты же не можешь пойти в Б6 потом. Ну, Солан, 4 еще поставить надо. А успеешь? Король Б8, Б5, король А7, С5, H4, слон... Не, ну вроде успеваю. 4, H3, B6, сюда. Взял, взял. Так, так и в партии было, в принципе. Ну да. Потом. То есть, то есть ты просто... Is lost. Is lost. Да. Только пешка на C5 не пошла. Ну да, то есть, скорее всего, уже ничего нельзя было сделать. Ну, вот. ну, в целом, все, что потом произошло, уже техника с твоей стороны. Может быть, мы можем глянуть, какие тут еще ресурсы могли быть. Я надо сказать, что уже близко к ничего оппозиция вот эта. Now you win with everything. Rook E5 wins, I think. Uh, да, например, ладей 5. Наверное, все-таки... Не хватает короля. Вот был бы король где-то тут. Ну да. Было бы вообще по-царски. Вот, а так немножечко не хватает. Но мы тебя поздравляем с победой. Красавчик. И Спасибо. мне кажется, что ты вообще, во всяком случае, сейчас показываешь лучший результат. Потому что, насколько я помню, у тебя э, из семи партий, э, по-моему, пять побед и две ничьи. Да. Ни одной не проиграл. Ну, красавец, надо также закончить, чтобы, э, в общем, без поражений пройти дистанцию. В общем, ты красавчик. Мы тебе желаем успехов в последнем туре. Может быть, что-то хочешь сказать? Нас смотрит примерно миллион семьсот тысяч человек. Так что всем им можешь передать привет. Ну, эту идею я узнал из партии моего тренера. Тащить пешки. Тащить пешки? Да. Ага, окей, хорошо. Сейчас переведем. Спасибо. Я хочу передать привет Сергею Климакову. О, я думаю, что он будет просто мега счастлив, потому что у него было примерно 7 инсультов и 5 инфарктов, пока он смотрел за всеми остальными партиями. Ну, общем... Так что я думаю, сейчас оно будет намного легче. Спасибо тебе, Тём, и отдыхай, и успехов в последнем туре. Спасибо. Сейчас надо справа нажать кнопочку leave, покинуть, да? Хорошо. Okay, so I will uh, very quickly uh, translate what uh, Thomas said about uh, everything. So, uh, first of all, yeah, uh, he's mentioned that uh, this idea of uh, pushing the pawns he learned from the game of his coach, uh, Sergei Klimakos, who is also in our chat uh, pretty much all the time. So, um, yeah, uh, this is an important thing just to know what to do in which moment and even if you're objectively objectively losing that you have to yeah. do something and take I, it I was impressed chance. by his uh, determinants here because he played very fast and he he just pushed the pawns and, and black got stuck he mixed up two plans one plan is to go with the king to b8 and a7 and win just easy winning the other mm -hmm. plan is to try to rush with the h pawn and he did both and uh, that does true So either he has to stop with rook e5 and then try to run a pawn or some other, we looked at something before with, that's one way to win and the other way is to just go with the king to b8. Yeah. There are two ways. And he tried both. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Uh, and uh, yeah, the very uh, important thing that uh, I guess he's the best player from our team right now because uh, he, in Out of uh, seven rounds, he managed to score six points with oh, five right. wins and two draws without losing a single one. So this is very impressive. Uh, Nikita, we have a chance to bring in Alva. Should we do that? I think we need to do it yeah. right now. Exactly yes. right now. Okay. Daniel, can you bring in Alva? Yes, yeah, I think... Uh, Uh, Alva is here. Ah. Yeah, so uh, now we can hey, see Alva. Hey. Hi. Can you speak English or do you want to do it in Swedish? Um, English. Okay, we do it in English. Congratulations on your good play. We have followed your games and we are very impressed by your, your play so far. What do you think yourself? How, have you, how, have you, how, how has the match been? 
Um, pretty, pretty good, but I have used too much time. Yes, we have noticed that you are, are in time pressure a lot, but we are very impressed by your opening play and um, by your play overall. So uh, why do you think so much? Um, I don't know. It's like I'm thinking about many variations, but then I go for the one that I uh, taught at first. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay, congratulations. Do you, do you want to see the sketch? Should we look at your last game? Against uh, yeah. Okay, let's go through it. Yeah, so um, maybe we can skip opening stage uh, because it was pretty... I have really one standard. question about the opening. We, yesterday we saw you play the Grand Prix attack in one game. Uh, mm -hmm. And and then uh, we also saw you play the, the close Sicilian and then you played with F4 and you played this. this you lost the game, I think, uh, on time more or less. Uh, but today you used another strategy. How come you have so many lines to choose from in this opening? Um, like... This is what I'm usually playing. With Bishop but, A6, yeah. Yeah, um, but with F4, it's like almost the same. And, and yeah, it's good to know many, so that's why I can so. Yeah, but uh, it's impressive that you, because when you have one good line, you usually you stick to it all the time, but you, you have many options, that's good. Okay, let's see the game. Nikita, you can make some moves here. Yeah, 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 very impressive. And uh, I think this was the start of the big fight. So right now, both sides managed to uh, bring their pieces to the game. So um, yeah, start of the big fight. And um, Alba plays bishop h6, the very natural idea to get rid of uh, dark square bishop. So one um, question, Alva. Um, did you play this other line today because you wanted to avoid preparation by your opponent? Um, yeah, <laughs> or I didn't think about it so much. Oh, well, it just looked like because you, you got a very good ga game yesterday when you played with F4. Uh, hmm. Even though you... I like this uh, the most. Julia, okay, yeah. Okay, let's, let's see. Yeah, so and after d5, I guess um, you managed to exchange this strong bishop and uh, after exchanging uh, just takes takes and very nice d4. So looking at your games, I've noticed that usually uh, what you're trying to do is uh, just to develop your pieces, maybe not to um, playing not too aggressively in the opening, but then after the opening stage in the middle game, you just find exactly the right moment when to strike. And um, that's, that's impressive uh, style. Very cool one. And I guess here you already, what were your emotions at this, in this moment? Are you satisfied with the position? Uh. Yeah, I think that I'm a little better, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty good with this. Have you had uh, the same type of position before with this isolated d5 pawn uh, in this line? Yeah, it happens pretty often. Okay, because that's very common. If you have uh, an experience with it, you feel uh, sort of at home in this type of position and it's much easier to play. So, can I ask another question? Are you playing a lot of Blitz games on the internet? Um, no. No? Okay. I like to play long games. Okay. Hmm. So Maybe because... On the internet? Yeah, because of that, most likely you like to take your more time than in, in rapid games. And so you just go deep into position and find the, the best karate mode. <laughs> so and um, yeah I think pretty quickly you managed to find the way right here all this combination with um, uh, knight e6 we can see that um, uh, you spent one and a half minutes 
and then the rest of of uh, uh, of the moves came pretty much instantly with knight e4 and knight g5, and the the whole black's position collapses immediately after knight d8. Just... Yeah. But him, I think I should have take with a rook first. Oh, with a rook. Interesting. Taking with a rook. I. Uh, yeah, I think that's actually very playable. But what you did also was very qualitative. And uh, after taking, taking. Uh, yeah, this looks horrible for black. Yeah, black's king is exposed, and uh, your bishop is pretty much all pieces are dominating. Yeah, I have a question, Alva. When when um, when she played queen d6 before, uh, did you see immediately that you could go for this uh, idea with uh, take and knight e4? Um, Here. Not or I saw, I saw like that I could do like things with knight e4 because of the queen, and then I find this. Because it's not, I mean. When I see a position like this, what you think about is you want to take the d5 pawn and you want to maybe double on the e file and so on, think very strategically. And it's actually easy even for strong players sometimes to, mi to miss a thing like this because it's a sort of deviation from the standard plan, right? To take and play knight d4. It's, sub it's, it's just a sudden opportunity that you maybe didn't expect. So it's very nice to spot this and, and uh, just win when you get the chance. So well done. Okay, you can continue, Nikita. Yeah, very well done, and uh, uh, I think a very nice, um, very nice moment of spotting this X-ray of unprotected piece and uh, how you can use it during the game. So yeah, um, yeah, and after this, I think after rookie six, just a couple of very precise moves. C three also stabilizing the position, and then after rook d8 going for the immediate attack. Um, it was pr very impressive, I have to say, very impressive. And the bunch of these threats, like um, queen, queen f6 and bishop d5, the final blow was very impressive. So uh, I want you, I want to uh, congratulate with you with a very Good, good play, good qualitative play, and uh, you also managed to outplay Maria twice. Not even, not only uh, today, but also yesterday. Mm. So very cool. And uh, so far, I think you're doing uh, the best from your team, right? You have four and a half points. Yeah. Yeah, so, very nice, very good play, and uh, we hope uh, you you will continue to play well in the last round. Also, I think we're closing in on the. Yeah, it's only a couple of minutes, so I think we should say thank you, Alva, for uh, having you here in the in the studio, so to speak. And thanks for your comments, and uh, good luck in the last game. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Good luck. So, uh, is it one round to go, Tom? It's only one round now. One round. Wow. Everything finishes so quickly. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah, it's, it's been an it's been a interesting uh, uh, and very uh, surprising uh, match for me because uh, the level of play and the level of preparation has been much higher than I expected. Uh, okay, you can been, keep you can mistakes. keep these words for the for the final speech. What? <laughs> you can keep these words for the final speech. Oh, this is the <laughs> final speech. No, but but this uh, is not over I, yet. I think uh, that's my my uh, my immediate impression here that uh, that uh, it's um, surprisingly well uh, played and uh, True. I, I'm a, I'm a bit surprised by the ratings because the ratings are not so high. And uh, I expect these guys, all of them, to explode in the rating field uh, in the coming years because they are already so strong. Yeah, true. And um, the combinations they're showing is just, from time to time, they're just mind-blowing. Yeah. Um, so 
Uh, again, yeah, we have a message in the chat. So sad that it's only one round left. So not. Yeah, that's nice to hear. I, I, I that's very nice that. to hear. Yeah. yeah, indeed. Thank you very much to everyone. And um, if you join just couple, a couple of minutes uh, ago, we have a friendly match between Latvia and, and Sweden. Match, um, is it like under 14 officially, right? Well, the ages are between 8 and I think 13. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so... Uh, but yeah, we, we see a lot of action, we see a lot of fight, and I guess the, uh, we will see a very interesting fight in the final round. So uh, yeah, we can say also about uh, current standings. Um, Latvia has 16 and a half points, Sweden uh, has 11 and a half, which probably is not so important in overall, right? No, Latvia has won the match and, and well deservedly, uh, but it's been really a wild ride, and it, anything could have happened. Yeah, yeah, true. We, we, we just have to see what happens in the last round. Uh, yeah, we saw a lot of games uh, where was a lot of turnarounds during the game, and all three, or how I like to say from time to time, four results were possible. So completely. Um, Unexpected, though. Unexpected, though. Yes. Um, so we didn't have games yet. Aha, uh -huh, okay. So finally we have it. So the first game, again, Alva plays with White. I expect something like E4. Uh -huh, and we see the French. French, def French defense. Is that the first French? I think so. Mm, no. We had one before. Uh, I think yes. I don't remember in which game, but I think oh, that was the very first game we looked at in the whole match. That was the game between Arvid and uh, Tolmachos. Yeah. You remember that was a uh, French. That uh, oh no, that that wasn't the French. That was Petrov. What yeah, am I saying? No, it wasn't. It was we had this Korokan game, but that was a Korokan, but it ended up with something very French-like. So we've had almost a French, but this is the first real French. Hmm. Okay. If, if you remember, okay, chat, please join. Uh, if you remember a uh, French game in this chat, please write. There might be, a, have been one. Yeah, I, I know a lot about this because I always play Knight C3 in this position. And um, yeah, I've played many games. And in Sweden, the French defense has been it used to be the main defense, but no, oh, seriously, among mm. all the top players, yes, they, everyone played the French except for me. I didn't play it, but almost all the mm. other players played the, the French. So interesting. I, I the, that was the opening I prepared the most because I knew I would always get to play these preparations. Um, so Ulf I, Anderson, I, for instance, played the French. Mm. He also played the Sicilian, but he played a lot of French games, and yeah. I played French only a couple of uh, times in my life in uh, standard games, and I tried to vinegar system with uh, bishop b4 and c5. Yeah, um, th this is the most popular, I think, and it used to be. Yeah, but we see knight f6 and e5. Mm -hmm. What is this? Yeah, this is one of the lines. The, the alternative would be to play bishop g5 instead of e5. That's I usually mm -hmm. play bishop g5, but I've played this also. It's very, very positional in a way because uh, we get this big clash in the center. Mm -hmm. So, um, is it always about fighting for the central squares and uh, both yeah. sides have but this? Black uh, must, if black gives up the fight in the center, then white usually has a very easy game. So. Black should uh, attack, uh, you know, with everything he's got uh, to to try to break the center. Sometimes, you know, you 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 sacrifice a piece in the center in this line too. Yeah, and black uh, after finishing development, let's say with bishop e seven and short castle, they always have this f six f six ideas uh, to undermine this pawn chain from both sides. So from right. this one and from this one. Yeah, 
This is standard. Yeah, <laughs> very standard. Oh, and Alva sacrifices a pawn on d4. Hmm, interesting. Uh, I'm pretty sure um, the idea is well known, although I'm not sure if... Can you do it right now? I wouldn't yeah, be well, so confident I, about I it. I have to say that I have not played this myself. Uh, but it, it's a well-known idea, but, but yeah. I guess the idea is just to, um, yeah, but the, the, to use this to use this pawn as a shield, right? Yeah. You could play like king h1 and try bishop g b5, or I don't know what. Something like this, no? Yeah, you could go for you know the big. Uh, but I guess black has the f6 break then, so it's uh, yeah. I'm not sure. Maybe it's the right time. F6 now, I think, is the right move. Yeah, it looks very logical because, because if, all... you, if you if you allow white too much, then the the attack could be very dangerous. But if f6 comes, it's uh, yeah. Yeah, if you try to play something like this, spending a lot of moves for nothing. Yeah, yeah. The, um, I don't I don't like queen b6 because white is not going to try to take the d4 pawn. Yeah, and basically king right now has no defenders at all. So yeah. pretty much all his army is on the other other part of the board. And uh, if white had the knight on g3 now, he could immediately play. Uh, she could immediately take on h7 and then knight g5. It would be winning. Yeah, true. So the so, very uh, classical idea of yeah. sacrificing and then bring uh, queen to the game. After maybe knight maybe G5 you can check. do it now. Maybe you can do it now. Take on h7, knight g5, and then queen d3, and then over to h3. What happens? Take on h7, king takes, knight g5 check. Yeah, maybe, by the way. King king goes back, queen d3. It's dangerous. Yeah, it looks very sure dangerous. Did, but... Yeah. Hmm. So th this is very nasty, this attack on h7. Maybe you should take on h7, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> It, maybe it, yes, maybe no. Maybe Ray maybe yes, maybe no. no. Who knows? <laughs> Chess is difficult. Okay, she plays queen to e1. A bit slow approach. So maybe now black um, gets some time here. Maybe now you could do f5 to slow things down. I don't know. Knight b4 also. But now we can now we can take. We should take yeah, some. I think knight b4 is, Let's is take a it. big provocation. Yeah, take the pawn. Don't be afraid. <laughs> I don't and, know if it um, works. I don't know if it works. Yeah, I'm not sure either because this is very forced. Like takes, takes, queen h4 goes back, knight g5. So mate in one threatens on h7. But you, move, you move the rook and then... You move the rook and you run to, yeah, to b8. Yeah, it's not clear at all. It's not clear at all. To the bright new world from the yeah, g8 to b8. World. On the other hand, it's very tempting to, to get going with this attack and uh, yeah. Yeah, true. I don't know what happens actually. Because you get to take uh, the, the g7 pawn with the queen and, and then you do f5 and everything is coming. I think you should take on h7. That's my mm, impression. Because yeah, I, th I think so either. And, and then the knight check and uh, yeah, I don't know. I think so too, I think so too. So shall we... Move Let's to go to another next. game and we'll go back yeah. to this afterwards. As we know, Alwa will take, uh, you like take to her think time. About, she's thinking about it now. I'm sure she's thinking about it. Ooh. Oh, we have the G4 attack again. Oh. But what's this? But not successfully. No, it's... It, something went wrong here, I think. Yeah, I think it's just technically lost. But uh, was it again the same one? Okay, Queen yeah. C2. Yeah. Bishop B4. Uh huh. Bishop b4, huh? Yeah, Mitilus definitely has has to work on his um, on his semi slav with white. Uh, so I always preferred to play Bishop b2. Yeah, I I have played this line with white in, in some game with Bishop d2 because then you have the long castle and the, so on. That's very Bishop d3 looks. Yeah, it's a bit. I don't premature, know. premature. Yeah, yeah, and, and a waste of time, so to speak. Yeah, and this this again is a little bit premature because 
uh, just not the right time. Yeah, yeah. While your king is in the center. Right idea, not at the right time. And here we see action in the center, so takes, takes, and now, now g4. Mm, so, yeah. But now it was just not, nothing coming out of it. I mean, this g pawn is not doing anything here in this situation. Yeah, attacking nothing, basically. Yeah. yeah so. And there is no follow up. So, normally there should be uh, some ideas using this diagonal or, um, uh, yeah, trying to. To use center like some uh, uh, e3 for undermining the center, opening up the position, but having this, yeah, again, especially against Arvid, because as we know from this match, Arvid is a very strategical player. He's, yeah. He has very positional, nice positional approach. So, uh, yeah, very, very inspiring game by him. And after g6, what was that? Just a clear blunder? Yeah, he seems to be a little bit on tilt here, right? Yeah, he's on tilt for sure. So, uh, and and I can understand that. I mean, he's played many games, and it, it's a lot of nervous tension every time. And true, true. Uh, and if you're not doing well, I mean, you feel you don't feel the inspiration, and the, you play more on with your hands and not so much with your with your mind. Yeah, true. And, and then. then yeah, all of us, we, we had this experience yeah, and not yeah, it's, it's once normal. or twice. These are young kids and I mean, it's, it's, it's a tough situation. And it, it's a good experience as well. I mean, just yeah, yeah, in general, yeah. not only in terms of chess, but uh, yeah. uh, it's a good experience for the life, I guess so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, but that was a pity. I mean, it, it, it's, it's so... It's, it's such a bad feeling to, to do something like that. You know that I mean, I shouldn't do that. And what is my trainer going to say? And, you know, everything. Is yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's, he's still fighting, you see. He's, he has some attack going here. So maybe maybe he gets some chances anyway. Yeah, and it's not 100% he... sure. I would uh, consider something like when H4 and after uh, F4, maybe even some ideas with E4, D5 opening up a big diagonal. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? It's, it's, yeah, some something like queen queen to h4, and and after f4 you could. What can you do? Of course, you're lost, but uh, yeah. Because it's uh, not anymore something about objective. Uh, no. Objective evaluation of the positions It's just trying to creating some chances for you, and yeah. despite the real uh, computer uh, plus one or two or whatever he's showing. So yeah. let's move on. Uh, I see a lot of action in this game. Oh, Victor! Oh, what is this? The same line again. The same line again. So. Should we go a little bit back just to understand? But 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 this is very interesting because White has sacrificed the rook and it seems to be winning. Yeah. This is the absolutely the same line. Absolutely. E5. Uh-huh. So instead of h5, Maria plays bishop d3, preventing bishop f5 and now threatening h5, right? Yeah. So she's improving. Wow. Wow, what is this one? She's improving the game that was just played like a couple of minutes ago, like less than one hour ago. That's that's the termination. That's the termination. We're playing under 14. Uh, I'm just reminding. Well, these are all the all the coming grandmasters and world champions, and all in this match. It's impressive. Ooh, that, that's impressive. So B3 defending. Uh, not to not to get a checkmate and a5 boom here we have f5 and rookie one now hmm. comes the now comes the interesting part here takes takes and tsh, boom what a boom <laughs> tsh, 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 takes is it the end of the world or not pretty much yeah, it looks like. Uh, I mean, Ruby, if you play Rook Ruby seven, seven, you take on H seven, and then where do you go? Yeah, I think that's over. It's over. 
That wow. was that was fantastic. What a game! After after taking rook f king f seven, you can play rook f one, for instance, easy. Yeah, yeah. Among other so, among other things, we're about to see, or this one. Also, also, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think so. this a five move that he played. That, that's that's. Uh, but rook takes e four. What a move! That's the move of the match, more or less. Uh, I will remind you what. Uh, Artyom said in his interview after the game, in this moment, so until this, everything was prepared. So yeah, yeah. Uh, in their team, they're working hardly on, on the openings. And so far, nothing new for, for our players. And uh, he mentioned that E5, I haven't seen this move. And he also mentioned that the chance bomb was showing something like plus two after e5. And I guess that, um, that someone uh, said or mentioned or um, uh, just, yeah, said that uh, e5 is a mistake. And in case Victor is going to repeat the same line, then there is a clear problem. Wow. Impressive. Phenomenal. I mean, I mean, again, the preparation and the, everything is just, uh, yeah, remarkable, I would say. On a very high level, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, let's, let's move on uh, to the, wow, to this game. Oh, oh this she, is... took, she took on h7 and now she's losing. <laughs> no, it's very intense. What's happening here? Knight e5, knight h7, yeah. I think it should be what? winning maybe for, for white. Looks very good. I'm trying to count pieces. Uh, so is it uh... it's one, one piece for one piece for black? Actually, hmm. it's one piece exactly. Only one piece. Mm, not such a big price. No, also there, there are lots of things hanging. The rook on f8 is hanging. The knight on e5 is hanging. Yeah. Of course, the pawn on c2 is hanging also. But I mean, what's happening now? Oh, oh. Oh, wow. Yeah, the thing is, if you take on f8 immediately, then I guess black is going to d7. I'm going to d7. Uh, attacking the queen, attacking the rook, and yeah, this is this is insane, insanely complicated. Yeah, you have to think, uh, and it's not one hundred percent clear what's the best option here. Okay, maybe we can look at the last game there is a bishop g5 check i don't know what's happening with that here uh yeah i think this could be the main move right now because then you can move the rook to c1 you can take one f8 with the knight perhaps checking and e5 is hanging i my, my instinct is that this must be completely winning for white but you have to find the right moves it's not uh, it's not elementary yeah, this is a dark forest. But it looks like it must be winning, right? Don't you feel that? Yeah, somehow. A computer win, so to speak, but it's not easy. It's it's not easy, but okay, queen f8, I'm not sure about that move actually, because now maybe get, black gets some, uh, I don't know, is knight f6 now? What about f takes e6? I like this move because yeah, we're- f takes e6 maybe. Uh, you can take with the queen because of queen c5. And if you take yeah. with the pawn, then, uh, well, we have additional maybe, options. Maybe this is the simple solution, yeah. You, if you take with the pawn, what do you do then? Are you thinking about... Maybe king c7, I don't know. Oh, king c7 and e7. Probably. Uh, and if I take with the pawn, then queen g7 could be the most... <gasps> Oh, I think I found the beauty. Queen g7, king d6, and queen e5. Is it working? Looks like okay. mate, but I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure. 
Is it? Oh, I think I think e four and d three. I think uh, queen g seven, king d six, and knight g three could be a nice trap. And if you take on a one, then they take on e five takes, and then bishop f four mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is there. She plays it. Oh wow. But I, I think bishop g5 uh, before instead of this uh, might have been simpler, but this should be good also. Now she's an exchange up. Maybe just bishop f4, to be honest. Yeah, probably. Yeah, you, you, you don't have to make it so difficult. Just take everything you can take. Probably winning. Maybe now she's calculating your mating idea here. Is it mate? It's not. Uh, yeah. Goes to four and d three. Uh, I just like the the art of chess. So knight g three, that would be. But what about let's say you play, queen takes bishop f four, king e four, and now rook a d one, threatening mate on f six and on g five, hmm. and on g three. Hmm. How do you defend against three mate threats? Uh, most likely, there is no defense, I guess so. Yeah, bishop f4 is the simplest one. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. knight a1. So, it looks like after taking on e5 and taking on a1, white has just an extra piece, and that should be good enough. Yeah, but she should have taken the mate, you know. But yeah. she has only three minutes. That's the problem. You, you, well, how do you play when you have so little time? It's it's difficult. Maybe knight d four is the best uh, technical decision right here. I think here. that's. Uh, I think you're you're right. You should do that. Just include this couple of moves, and, and then uh, you can uh, include also rook c1 later. And you, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not through. only then you can, or even you can ignore this knight and this horse in the corner. Maybe. Yeah, hmm. knight, knight d4 looks very strong. True, true. So Alva is. Uh, should we go back and just see the, the situation when she took on h7? It, it would be nice just to see. Yeah, I agree. So this was the moment when we left and uh, bishop h7 was in the game, takes on h7, knight g5, boom. I mean, yeah, that was a big provocation. So rook d8, uh-huh. I was considering this move. I thought uh, just to, to have Yeah, I, I understand, square. yeah. Yeah, that would, that would have been an alternative, uh, definitely. And here, yeah, and we, we have joined and it is super hard to play when you're under the such pressure. Ah, oh, she won. Okay, so the game finished. Yeah, so by the way, she took on d4. Nice. Brilliant play. Brilliant, brilliant. brilliant. Yeah. And um, okay, so Alva has five and a half out of nine, out of eight. Yeah. She, Impressive. She, yeah. She impressed me by her play. I mean, she played well in all True. games. Um, True. And... Uh, Really promising player. She's she was the oldest player in the Swedish team. Yeah, yeah but she was also definitely the one who played the best chess. For sure, uh, hundred percent agree and very impressed uh, by several games, especially. So, yeah, um, yeah. Wish wish to see her in some uh, uh, big official events. Yeah. So. Well, Let's move this on. This is just a training match, right? True, true. Yeah, but really great games. And this game, I mean, I would have been proud to play a game like she played here. I mean, that's yeah, yeah, play and, yeah, absolutely. And very interesting idea there to sacrifice this pawn. I, I, I know that this is possible, but I haven't actually seen it much in this exact position. But maybe it's a, it's mm -hmm. a line that she has analyzed. Yeah, true. So what do we have here? <laughs> we have two games left, uh, and this is one of the um, one of the games. I think the most interesting fight so far. Or we also can have a look at the second game. Uh, yeah, that's the game we looked at before, right? Yeah, I think so. So let's see, was... because we haven't seen this game at all. So we how haven't seen evaluate, it. How, how would you evaluate? Uh, 
Oh, okay, we see what's happening. So we have uh, Matia against uh, Archoms, yeah? Yeah, Matia against uh, Archoms. So Queen C7, okay, some preparation, preparation, improvement of of their pieces. And uh, I'm very impressed by uh, opening knowledge in this, in this pair. And we, we, when we see this, we can sort of compare it to the game uh, yesterday where Maria played against... Um, I think it was against Victor, this game where she played a5 and yeah uh, and and here we see a completely different strategy why it is castling king side and playing a4 a5 and suddenly it's a completely different picture. Yeah, so uh, the other story was uh, yesterday uh, you mentioned after long castle and uh, I think yeah in this position. Yeah, so yeah. White played long castle, and uh, we saw an a5, knight a6, and uh, attacked the king with many, many fireworks. And uh, Matia chooses uh, another very solid positional setup, um, bringing his king to the um, safe square of yeah, g1. So, so now, now it, it becomes much more positional and. and uh, the kings are not the focus, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. So how how would you evaluate this position? Exactly this one after a c five. Yeah, uh, I we think it's. <laughs> I think this is very um, very complicated overall. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would play with black, just because of I'm. I really like uh, playing uh, Sicilian with black, but I guess objectively white is a little bit better just because of having uh, more space on the queen side, having this trump, kind of a trump, uh, a5. Yeah, I think and... it's a, a, the, the position, as you say, it's, it's uh, in a way it's not typical for the Sicilian because um, usually, uh, White is not concentrating everything on the queen side the way he is in this, uh, in this oh. game. And uh, with knight, um, knight c5 here, things are happening. And, and as we see in the game, we get a, a very unusual pawn formation. And the question is how that pawn formation, how that works. So let's... let's, let's you said about pawn formation and just in one move, uh, it changed. Yeah, th that's uh, significantly. what I'm saying. Yeah, we get this... Uh, but white, white has very strong bishops here, so that compensates for the weakness in the pawn formation, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. And uh, they also have some perspectives in the queen side, so yeah. not so obvious at all. Uh, but I thought maybe it was worth to include bishop c4 first, because uh, definitely black has some um, lack of space on the uh, queen side, and... Uh, and just the general rule in this case is would be not to exchange many pieces. So yes. I think this I agree is... with you. I agree with you. Now, the more you exchange, uh, the the more this weakness, if you can call it that, in the pawn formation, uh, pawn formation is is felt. Um, uh, so let's see what happened here. Yeah, I think uh, in this case we see some kind of overpopulation in the Black's camp, right? Yes, yes. And you should utilize, utilize that by blocking with bishop c4, I agree. Yeah, and after bishop c4, you have uh, some kind of uh, just using this one. And mm -hmm. after exchanges, definitely a lot of fresh air came to the Black's, Black's camp, right? Yeah. And but yeah. Still, still very solid for white, I would say. I would consider something like knight d7, bishop d8, mm -hmm. or mm, something relocating this knight, maybe playing g6, f5, I don't know. Um, yeah. So h6 was played, queen d3. OK, bishop d8, also interesting, by the way. I like right. bishop d8. It's the right moment now, because the, you cannot move back. So <clears throat> this must be seen as a. <clears throat> a step forward for black. Mm, although white has some perspectives. Imagine a situation yeah. where 
white played b5 and then supported his a5 pawn by the second b pawn and uh, it's a problem for white with the king uh, and and when the, the queen goes to c7 and uh, maybe the knight can jump to h5 f4 things like this so there are some dangers for for white here i think oh you know what you know what i think i found an interesting resource a b5 huh. i'm not sure if it's necessary most likely not necessary at all but it could be an interesting resource yeah the only problem is that c6 is a weakness maybe queen can come to c6 and after b5 yeah yeah i wouldn't play it uh right now i think true true i would, so, I think I would wait but uh, queen c7 i think is a very strong move yeah just in some cases by the way now we are already maybe threatening because of having yeah. this invade yeah. ideas and he wow i'm very impressed by the prophylaxis what they're yeah, playing saw that this is dangerous yeah yeah just king king f8 wow big and he's not exchanging, not improving his pawn structure. No, but very good. Yeah, he realizes that then then white is better. Yeah, so he plays. Yeah, it's, it's wow. some sort of dynamic, maybe. I don't know if it's equality, but now what happens? Wow, I really like um, the way how they're playing by both. Uh, yeah. which is very important. It's interesting. This is very unusual position. Uh, white has some weaknesses, but also some strengths. Uh, sure. Maybe now you could go for, if you want to make a draw with white, you can play bishop a4. Maybe uh -huh. go for queen. I don't know what's happening, but... Can I take on d5? But isn't so that a draw then? Just check. Check here. here. You check, check on c8 and you check on c7. And yeah. Looks like that. Most likely, um, you have to go for. <gasps> uh, yeah, <laughs> I thought I found something geniusly, but not. <laughs> I think Bishop A4 is a draw. If, yeah. white, if White wants a draw, but maybe White wants something else. But I think it's a bit, as you say, it's a bit risky for for White because uh, of the. It is risky Strat from strategical point of view, just because of this uh, this pawns. Yeah. And. Um, because yeah, of that, he plays. He plays. wow, impressive, impressive. So that's that's it then, the draw. Well played. Yeah, I think black can't, can't really avoid the draw. So this game actually looks like a very qualitative chess, like very qualitative. Yeah. Yeah, it's still, it's still only a draw, right? Yeah, it's only a draw. <clears throat> you don't so both no players managed to keep the balance and... Uh, unfortunately, yeah, after queen c8, there's no way how to no sacrifices like knight d7 and run away with the king. Maybe you're losing. <gasps> he goes for this. No, but he made the wrong. He played queen takes b4. He should have taken on d5. No, but uh, I think he missed that after queen d7, uh, bishop is protected. No, but it's check. I mean. Do you, you mean he sacrificed a piece? But is it actually lost? I'm but thinking queen, that queen maybe there is a perpetual. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe this is still a... It should oh, be. but there is bishop c2, right? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But there is a mate on e1. I see that. But, <laughs> but I think you have some... You have some moves, right? Yeah. Yeah, true. Wow. Yeah, he was also under the, the time pressure, only having one minute left on the clock, so... Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, missed control over over the position. It's not, it's not quite finished yet. As you say, there are some loose pawns in the white position, and the king is a little bit threatened, so... But where to go? He has not, no clear way where to hide, unfortunately. No. After oh, bishop c2. But do you have to play f5 or can you do something else? But no, you, you can't really. If you no. go here, then after g4, yeah, it's uh, g4, no. it's resignation. <laughs> well, it's not mate, but you have to. <laughs> so bishop c2, f5, queen e8. Yeah, it should be just check, check, check and win, right? 
Yeah. King G5, check. And if you yeah. go there, again, the problem is Queen H4. Sadly, sadly, it was a very qualitative game, but yeah, what to do. So maybe Mate, he had this winning game we saw, this uh, Sicilian where he had everything, yeah. and he yeah. went into the mates. Hope, hopefully he thinks a little longer this time. <laughs> yeah, well, he's not in the time pressure, under the time pressure. So I guess everything should be should be good. Now Queen E8. But yeah, main thing is not to uh, not to lose, King not G5, to miss something. And then you play Queen E7. Yeah, it's, it's it will be mate. Queen E7. Yeah. King F4, you just play Queen H4, and you win the Queen. Yeah, very important motive because if you doesn't have Queen H4, then it's not so trivial at all. I mean, yeah. Now it's winning, you see. Yeah. Wow, these guys are really strong. But he made a mistake. This happens to everyone. But before that, as you said, he played very well. And he made one mistake, queen takes b4. After queen takes d5, I guess it's a draw, right? Yeah. But shall we move? OK, this is over. And we have the very last game left. And uh, surprisingly, but it's not over yet. And more than that, uh, I think this is a huge fight because of, oh. uh, first of all, the time pressure and what's going on here. Uh, I think uh, Mitzel is showing some fighting spirit. Well, some this is actually spirit. lost for black. Take on g6. I think uh, after takes on g6, some big problems are or this one also works okay, I guess. No takes. Oh wow. Yeah. We have to go back and, and see what happened because he was completely winning Arvid, but Arvid seems to sometimes he, he takes things too slow. I mean you, you need to Yeah, he has uh, this fundamental under understanding of chess and um, already now a Pretty good education, but uh, he's not very doing a very good job in converting. And uh, he needs to be more tactical in his play. He yeah, he a, definitely needs less, to work. less positional play. I think now you have to try King D7. I think, but it's completely lost. You take on well, it's not so clear. Aha, he takes. Yeah, this is. Yeah, now it should be bad. Yeah. yeah. Wow, what a turnaround in this match. Yeah, the, we've seen this in many games that uh, if you just fight on, you, you have chances. And, uh, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. That's the general rule of chess. I mean, you have to fight till the very end, uh, no matter what happens. And uh, maybe you'll be the lucky. <laughs> Correct. The lucky guy. Yeah. As we know, in game of chess, the winner is that one who makes the mistake. No, it's mating one. Mating one. I missed it. <laughs> Queen f7 was mate. Oh, now it's mating two instead. Yeah, in Latvia, we prefer mating two, you know? <laughs> yeah, if you can make mating two, it's better than mating one, yeah. Wow. So we have... That was, um, that was the very last game of the match. Uh, I guess, again, this is two against two, no? Yeah, yeah. With very good chances for you, uh, for the Sweden to win. Yeah, there, there were some mis missed opportunities, but on the other hand, we got this win uh, that we just saw that was perhaps uh, a bit lucky. But uh, so overall, it's uh, if you are not happy today, you're going to be happy tomorrow or day after tomorrow. So. <laughs> Well, I'm not so worried. I think I hope the players are not too unhappy with the result. Uh, uh, I think they should True. just take this as a great training session and they should go back, analyze their games and draw their conclusions and just get back again and play. Um, I think they all played well. I, I didn't see anyone who really played badly. Uh, mm -hmm. were, everyone had their ups and downs and uh, yeah, True. impressive overall. Very good. Very impressive. So. You before the this round you started to say some 
uh, something and I interrupted. So maybe you can say these words right now <laughs> about how satisfied you're you are with well i, I think <laughs> i think uh, and i think for you also we went into this and we didn't know what this was right i i had no real yeah. idea I, i heard it was a junior match and they were very young and i thought okay so it would be like you know okay he's playing the sicilian very good he knows to see one c5 and so on but it turned out that we are we have eight experts And, and they know everything much more than I know about some of these openings. I mean, True. that's shocking. Uh, that is shocking, yeah, indeed. Yeah. And, um, and um, I mean, <clears throat> I've seen many things in these games that I will go back and analyze and look at myself and, and you know, try to understand what was actually happening. They know much more theory in some of these lines than I do. And um, yeah, I, I need to train a little bit more, I think. <laughs> Yeah, true. And right now I'm thinking about um, some European or world championship that sooner or later is going to be happen. And with much more interest, I would follow these eight uh, young ladies yeah. and gentlemen because I'm very impressed by their play. I'm really impressed by some interviews, uh, thoughts they share and uh, everything. So... Um, Yeah, it's it's just it was a really cool cool party. Like yeah, a, it was a cool party. I agree with you. And as you say, they 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 impressed not only by their play in the games, but also by their way of talking about chess. And, and yeah, and in general, their sort of uh, clarity and you know very very pragmatic uh, views. Uh, so yeah, great I think that match, great people. This is something that we're missing a lot during the, this uh, quarantine, yeah. uh, which is like uh, norm for for everyone during the last year. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm missing these uh, conversations and uh, and discussions about about chess, about some active life and everything. And uh, thankfully, we have this opportunity to uh, to have it in internet. And we have. Um, Um, Mustafa hey, Smart is in our studio. Hey guys. Yeah. Hi Matis. So uh, congratulations to the victory in the match. Thank you. Are you satisfied with your players? Yes, of, of course. They did great job and um, always winning is just like always he, he, always winning is good. So um, of course this was a friendly match but um, I'm really satisfied with all four um, turtle ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, who, who has fighting a lot, and it, this was a great, great um, chess, the tactical chess, and like all, I, I think all chess players know that Latvian um, chess players uh, are tacticals, and then they are playing very sharp chess, and I think. Uh, Maria and Rainis and Artyoms and Michaelis proved that. Yes. Um, I also want to say a very big thanks for um, Jonas Sandborn and the Swedish Chess Federation and Daniel Iverson for the technical things and of course you two. You both was uh, like a super du duo. duo. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And and, and and yes, I think, um, of course, um, such a matches gives um, s such young talents also some topic to, to, uh, to think about something. Yes, that there is also uh, things to improve. Yeah, what, what's what's your impression? What were, were the strengths of the players and where, would, where, where, do, where do you see the... Um, possibilities for improvement. I think the improvement, of course, will come with with some with with the years. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, But was it something uh, in the in the openings or anything like that that you sort of noted that ah uh, here we are? Um, I I think for the openings, uh, like already uh, Nikita said, it is just very, um, super surprisingly just in, that in such age. Uh, they know so well and 
I will say I would I would say so deep. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe um, I see some little problems for uh, mm, tactics, but uh, not for all of them, of course. But uh, there is like more or less um, about um, mm, psychological things. I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There is a um, lot of lot of psychological things, but uh, I I don't think it's a, a super big problem. You, I think uh, the mm, both team uh, uh, trainers and uh, individual trainers will talk with talk with them with the pop with these guys, and then they will they will manage to do something with that. And uh, I'm really happy that uh, such a match happened because this is good for them. Uh, even because uh, this maybe not wasn't a big uh, with a big uh, uh, time control, but this was like a normal rapid. Because um, I don't think that right now when you see this online chess is going uh, a lot. It's very good that such a youngsters play a lot of one minute games or two minute or three minute games. And this was the main thing that we uh, did that is this time control with the 15 plus five that he, they can think. And we all s see that they was they always all w were mm -hmm. thinking and, 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 and trying the best play chess. So I'm very happy, uh, of course, of, of both teams. Yeah, it was it was impressive, and as Nikita said, uh, for me it was an eye opener that they are so good, and and I will really follow these game these players, and and I will uh, have more interest in 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 uh, in the juniors, and uh, and I I think that they have a, a bright future. What do you think about that, Matis? Do you do you see them as promising? Uh, I, I I see no maybe not next but after some mm, I don't know five six years a youth champions the world world youth uh, and, and Europe champions yeah. and maybe even some new already adult champions yes but this is of course what will be in the how they will be working with themselves with the trainers yeah and um i wish them just the uh, best of luck of all of them of both teams and uh when i when i will be very old then we'll see this um, maybe i i hope i'm not will be too old that uh, uh but uh, then i will see this uh, video and i will be very satisfied if the, all of them, or maybe not all of them, but let's hope that all of them will have a big success in our super sport chess. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. I think <clears throat> I think uh, you, you can never guess or, or know who it, what's going to happen. And as we have seen, uh, uh, they have also other interests, many of them. Uh, so let's hope that they continue with chess. That's a big hope, I think. Because yes, I think the, this is the this also is the one of the main things that chess is not just a game. Mm -hmm. It gives for them um, more than yeah. just uh, wins or losses. It gives them um, a lifestyle. Yeah, and I think this match is important in that respect because suddenly they are. Uh, exposed to this uh, situation playing in the match and their, their games are commented on and they are asked questions and so on and they get some attention. And uh, as I told Nikita, I got a, um, an email from one of the fathers <laughs> uh, to one of the players in the Swedish team and he thanked me for um, commentating on the games and uh, I answered him that I think it's great fun and I'm impressed by their uh, uh, by their results and how they play. But he said that it means a lot for the juniors 
to to play these games and to be uh, to get attention for for their sport. So hopefully they will continue with chess. Yes, of course, of course. Yeah, and I can add that uh, we have a message in the chat. Uh, thank you, Tom and Nikita, for high level and instructive comments. So, oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, everyone, and uh, everyone who were behind the scenes, uh, who organized and controlled, like arbiters and the engineers, and uh, like many, many. So we have a big team, and uh, yeah, that's that's really cool. Uh, so yeah, hopefully. Uh, this is not the, the, the last event and um, because we already played, uh, I think, uh, was it last year or two years ago when we played uh, Riga Magicians against uh, Swedish, uh, Sweden Wasabis, uh, the, also a couple of, even a couple of friendly matches and uh, uh, the same format, uh, it was very cool. Um, yeah, so we just have to hope for more matches. And uh, as long as we have this COVID situation, I think this is the best we can do. I mean, this was great, True. great fun. True. And, and it just proves that chess lives on, <laughs> COVID, or not, COVID or not. True, of course. Um, that's okay. So, uh, yeah, I think we can... Uh, things to say here, are we finished or what? Yeah, I think we can uh, finish our broadcast. So again, Tak Ala, thank you everyone. Valdez Visim, всем спасибо. I don't know much languages, so um, thanks and see you soon. Yeah, bye everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. A premium membership at Chess.com will help you improve your game with full access to a powerful set of learning tools. Unlimited tactics let you practice like a master with more than 50,000 puzzles to challenge you at every level. Our library of interactive chess lessons created by master coaches will enhance every aspect of your game. And after each game you play, the computer analysis feature will give you feedback on every move you play, turning every game into a chance to learn. And that's not all. Premium benefits also include unlimited tournaments, video lessons, the opening explorer, and much, much more. Upgrade now to take your game to the next level.